Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there used to be a little flower. It was a night-blooming flower. It would only bloom in the shadow that would cast its sister, the big sister. The petals and the flowers and the leaves of the big sister would cast such a shadow, a big, nourishing shadow, that would allow the little sister to bloom and grow. This is one of those fairy tales that perhaps sound like they have hope in them, but you know, like every good fairy tale, there's a strong dose of horror there as well, and something is going to go terribly wrong. So today we are going to celebrate the 100th birthday of Chanel number 22. Here it is. And it is a fairy tale live stream. We're going to we're going to go through a journey together uh, on this quest to find the roots of Chanel number 22 and to maybe be the heroes of the story and try to redeem this night-blooming flower that can only grow in the shadow of its bigger sister. Can we allow this flower to also grow in daytime, to be visible on its own without always living in the shadow of its bigger sister? And then this fairy tale is also going to have an antagonist, there's going to be evil forces there as well. Are we going to be able, as the viewers and the co-chatters of this live stream, are we going to be able to win, be triumphant, or are we going to succumb to the fate that the evil forces predict for our little night-blooming flower? Welcome everybody to the Essentially Jacob fragrance live stream, Chanel number 22's 100th birthday. It is 2022. The fragrance was released in 1922. The perfumer behind it is Ernest Beau. And the Maison is Maison Chanel. So you guys, I want to say hello to all my co-chatters. Welcome to the live stream. Hello, Debbie, Rich Mitch, Velasquez, Kev, Jesus. Michael G, Dorcia S, everybody in the chats. How's it going? So we have the live chats going. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you subscribe, you can partake in the live chats, but also uh, thumb up the video if you're enjoying it thus far. While, uh, uh, thank you, Velasquez. Velasquez says, this is awesome, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. The color of that. <laughs> Serving. Thank you. Yes, I am to celebrate Chanel number 22's birthday. I am dressed like the bottle, <laughs> literally, I'm dressed in gold, just like the liquid, just like the just in number 22. Um, to celebrate the classic version of Chanel number 22 in this beautiful white container uh, with gold, uh, I, I'm wearing my white uh, 90s, uh, actually late 80s Chanel earrings with gold. And then we have a little cruise uh, Chanel uh, uh, hibiscus flower from the gardenia Chanel gardenia family, but a hibiscus is not a gardenia, uh, not a camellia. And then um, a little Chanel platinum to go with it. And of course, I am doused in Chanel number 22. I'm wearing the pure perfume on the chest. I'm wearing the eau de toilette here. And I'm we wearing the eau de parfum on this wrist. So while I'm talking and while we're going on this journey together to celebrate Chanel number 22's 100th birthday, um, in the chats, you can also prepare your stories in case you want to share your story connected to Chanel number 22, because I know a lot of people have stories connected to this fragrance. A lot of people have been using it for so, so many years. Uh, and a lot of people have not. Some people have been using it for many years. And then, you know, since several reformulations started uh, occurring, people stopped using it. So there's a lot of stories to go with it. Now, not just reformulation stories, obviously, but also um, 
memories connected to this perfume, beautiful memories, maybe sad memories. Why not? All memories are valid memories when it comes to perfumes. Um, yeah, sweater weather. Yes, Debbie. Gold quilted sweater weather. Uh, indeed, fabulosity. Thank you, guys. Hey, Luke. As hey, Saya. How's it going? I'm happy that you're honoring number twenty-two. Yes, and since Chanel uh, did not honor number twenty-two's birthday this year, uh, the Maison Chanel did not even acknowledge the fact that number twenty-two is celebrating its hundredth birthday this year. And I waited and waited and waited. You know, as the months of 2022 kept passing by us, I still held hope for some sort of special occasion that Chanel would kind of deliver to us to celebrate this this fragrance. And, well, here we are, 21st of December, 2022. It's the end of the year, and Chanel did not do anything to celebrate this perfume. So, well, here I am. I'm going to celebrate it because... Chanel number 22 might be that night blooming flower growing in the shadow of its bigger sister. Who might that sister be? Of course, Chanel number five. But I am optimistic that and hopeful that we, by the end of this live stream, will be able to take number 22 out of the shadows of its bigger sister and we will combat the evil character in this fairy tale, who might that be? And we're going to make it to the other side of the tunnel and we're going to see the light again. I've also uh, illuminated uh, the cement fashion bunker in gold. So we have this whole emotion. It's like I am inside of a Chanel number no. 22 perfume bottle swimming uh, inside of the uh, the fragrance. So I I opened the, the live stream with uh, this year's snow globe. Um, of course, I turned it the other way around so we don't see what perfume it is because, you know, Chanel, of course, does number five. But uh, I'm kind of envisioning that number 22 is inside of this snow globe because number 22 also comes in the pure perfume form or concentration. And uh, now this bottle is empty, but it's only empty because when I travel, I do like to carry it with me and I'm scared that it's going to spill. So what I did with this perfume bottle... I've decanted it uh, inside of um, a pharmaceutical glass spray bottle. Uh, it, it has brown glass so that that light doesn't affect the liquid inside. So I travel with this actually. Uh, but um, I do have... Well, we'll keep it for later. <laughs> mysteries and secrets oh my gosh there's so much to cover there's so much to talk about i've also prepared my little coconut drink also completely white and gold to celebrate number 22's 80s packaging hmm. oh my god this coconut giving me life because there was an imposter in the house as kept mm-hmm Hey, Zach. Hi, Jacob. Hi, all. Love love of my life is number 22. Hope this celebration is recorded since uh, here in Europe is almost midnight and I would love to see it all later. Yes, it's being recorded. We are recording live in front of a live virtual audience. I hope the audio is okay, you guys. And I also hope that because um, I'm kind of jittery on my control monitor here, but I hope I'm not jittery to you guys, like the image is not jumping. Um Toby. Hi, Toby. He live, uh, uh, love the background with your outfit. Thank you so much. Powdery chic. Indeed, fabulosity, says Velasquez. Beautiful, says David. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> we're envisioning that there's a 22 bottle inside of this snow globe and not a Chanel No. 5 bottle. Although we do, we do love our Chanel No. 5. And in fact, Chanel No. 5 is not the enemy. Uh, is not the... Um, evil character in this fairy tale oh no and truth be told this fairy tale is also uh, going to have strange knights and shining or less shining armor but it is 
the holiday season after all. And so, you know, we have gifts and packages and fairy tales and dreamy scenarios to talk about. Oh, look at all these gifts. Look at all. Look at all this beautiful stuff here. So it is the holiday season, right? So uh, I love tuning in to... Well, the Hallmark Channel, maybe not, but I love watching holiday movies that are not necessarily Christmas related because not everybody celebrates Christmas. I personally don't. But, you know, Gremlins came out during uh, the holiday season. Gr the first Gremlin movie plays right around Christmas. Uh, so that's a great one to watch right around this season. And then, of course, the love of my life, John Hughes. His movies usually play in snowy landscapes. Or it's either autumn, the end of autumn, just about to begin with winter. In some cases, it snows. In some cases, he's depicting Thanksgiving. But there's always kind of a romantic, comedic, dramatic aspect to his movies. And I just love them for the holiday season. In fact, just the other day, I watched uh, Airplanes, uh, Trains, and Automobiles with John Candy. Uh, I love this time of year for The Breakfast Club. And uh, actually, just two days ago, I also watched She's Having a Baby with Kevin Bacon, also John Hughes. Very, very underrated movie, but such a beautiful movie. So ahead of its time. It was not very successful when it first came out. And just like Chanel Number no. 22, it kind of keeps living in the shadow of the more famous movies like Ferris Bueller's Big Day uh, Out or um, uh, The Breakfast Club or Sweet Sixteen. Or 13 Candles, for that matter. So, sound is great. Okay, thank you, guys. Oh, sound is better than last time. Thanks, Jesus. Yeah, we're getting a hold of it slowly but surely. So, let's get let's go on this journey. Um, now, listen. Uh, Chanel number 22 has gone through an odyssey. It was released in 1922. And uh, the perfumer behind it is Ernest Beau, the same perfumer that created Chanel Number no. 5. Chanel Number no. 5 was released in 1921, one year before Number no. 22. And it is said also through interviews with uh, Ernest uh, Beau himself that he wanted Chanel Number no. 5 to almost resemble and smell of snow and ice. Number uh, 22 is supposed to be, again, in the shadow of number five, is supposed to be, allegedly, a number five toned down, mellowed, and heated up as if the snow is starting to melt and we're anticipating spring. Do I agree with this assessment? Hell no. Absolutely not. I think that Chanel number no. 22 is its own perfume. It, it has its own aura. It has its own magic. And boy, does it have a lot of magic. It has its own energy. Uh, it has its own drama. It's a very dramatic perfume, actually. A lot of people uh, envision it for weddings and think that that is the most beautiful perfume to wear to a wedding. Uh, but to me, well, this huge live stream is going to be, in reality, a very, very extended review, like the type of deep-rooted reviews that I do very, very rarely that go for hours and hours instead of just 15 minutes or or like some people might do, a one-minute perfume review, right? Oh, Rachel, Rachel Kay, thank you so much for the super chat. Rachel says, hi, Jacob, my first comment, Chanel chose number 22 to wear for herself and number five for her store. It's gorgeous. Love your channel. Thank you so much, Rachel, for this uh, tidbit of information. I did not know that Coco um, chose number 22 to wear for herself and number five for the store. This is the first time I hear this story, so I'm not... Quote the sources. That would help a lot if we knew the source. But I'm going to pop your cherry so of every super chat or tip or donation that comes into the fashion bunker, we have a little popper to celebrate the birthday, but also to thank... Uh, to thanks so much for the super chat. Here goes. We're popping a cherry. <claps> Woo! Yes! Happy birthday, number 22. And thank you so much, Rachel, for the super chat. 
We popped your cherry. Oh, there's smoke coming out of here. Ooh, cha. Oh, I love the smell of the smoke. Thank you so much. So, um, number 22 went through a lot of different stages and phases. It had a significantly wide distribution, particularly in the United States of America, throughout the decades, after the Second World War, all the way through into the 80s, and then also into the 90s. You could, in fact, purchase from Chanel Number no. 22 in America throughout all the past decades. So Chanel Number no. 22 soap, body talcum powder, uh, um, washing lotion, washing gel, rather, bath gel, body lotion, uh, of course, the eau de toilette and the parfum. The eau de parfum did not exist back then. Now, I do believe that Jacques Paul, who was the perfumer right after Henri Robert, uh, was the perfumer for Chanel. So basically, we have Ernest Beau, the big perfumers for Chanel. Ernest Beau. After Ernest Beau, we have another big... There was interim others, but we have Henri Robert, under whom we see the magical Chanel Chypras come to life. Uh, we see number 19, Cristal, or the Toilette, and uh, we also see uh, Pour Monsieur. Then, after Henri Robert, Jacques Polge, after Chanel has passed away, Jacques Polge takes over and uh, revolutionizes the house of Chanel in his own special way. He does deliver his own version of Cristal in the Eau de Parfum form. He does deliver his own version of Chanel number no. 19, but in Eau de Parfum form. Henri Robert did not deliver Eau de Parfum for Chanel number no. 19. And um, <clears throat> Jacques Paul reintroduces Chanel number no. 22 to the market uh, within the range of the four exclusives, which used to be exclusives back then, all the way up until 2006 slash 2007. Uh, but up until 2006, 7, reintroduced in the 80s, all the way to 2006, 7, we see uh, the in reintroduction of the four um, Chanel fragrances that were originally launched in the 20s in parfum form and or the toilette form. And those would be Gardenia, Bois des Îles, Cuir de Russie, and Chanel number no. 22. Except in America, in the United States of America, Chanel number no. 22 had its own distribution um, outside of the Les Exclusives range. By the way, back then, the Les, Les Exclusives range did not exist with that name. Now, today, we know it as the Les Exclusives collection, uh, which includes 15, 16, 17 fragrances. By the way, a new Les Exclusives fragrance is going to be launched next year uh, in apparently late spring uh, 2023. So, but um, when number 22, Cuit de Russie, Bois des Îles, and Gardenia were reintroduced to the market as the exclusives that you could only buy in the Chanel boutiques in the 80s, um, you could purchase the Eau de Toilette and the Parfum of Chanel number 22. Now, as that happened, again, in America, you could still purchase body range, you could still buy Chanel number 22 in this iteration. Also, outside of Chanel boutiques, you could also buy it in perfumeries, in some drugstores even. In fact, um, some of these Chanel number no. 22 bottles were made in the USA. Now, I bought one of the last batches produced before they discontinued these. So I'm not so sure. In fact, this one doesn't say if it was made in France or if it was made in the US, but I still have the original packaging. And in fact, on the original packaging, it does say made in the USA. But on the bottle, it doesn't. So this is the Eau de Toilette concentration that still has, still have a little bit of droplets left. And of course, I'm savoring this one because this is very rare. This one still has that good old incense swoosh uh, in the dry down, which is really delightful. It's the Eau de Toilette that, uh, so these were rechargeable. You could just take these, these are plastic white containers with a glass ring. Uh, not a glass, sorry, with a metal golden ring that pops on. So you take this off and you could you could back then purchase a refill. They discontinued the refills and then at one point you could just buy the full thing with the re, with the with the plastic container. Now Chanel doesn't do plastic anymore. They do metal, lacquered metal. So this is reminiscent of their Chanel number no. five uh, pure parfum 
<coughs> rechargeable, not rechargeable, but well, yeah, with the cartouche, the rechargeable pure perfume, the 7.5 mil pure perfume. But this is a 50 milliliter eau de toilette, uh, which is no longer in production. The eau de toilette is no longer in production either, but the white packaging with the refillable bottle is also no longer in production. Uh, the incense that used to be a very particular hallmark of number 22 is also very tame. Now, it shyly kind of pops up in the current version of the Eau de Parfum, but it's not really it. This is the Eau de Parfum bottle. Um, however, it's still quite present in the Eau de Toilette. Now, this Eau de Toilette is a batch code 5801, so it's 10 years old by now. Um, the vanilla overdose in Chanel number 22 turns. So it turns quite dark and ambery with time. So it starts off gold. Even this is already turning. Okay, even this is darker than it usually is when it's new. Uh, but this is darker still. So it gets darker and darker the more time passes. This is the vanilla oxidizing in it. This doesn't mean that your Chanel number 22 has gone bad. The top notes might be a little bit acidic after a while. I mean, the aldehydes in here are bombastic. So the opening note, whether it be the uh, Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum, is going to be, after, especially if the bottle is a little bit older, is, is it's going to be a little acidy stale in the opening. Uh, it can turn that way, but don't worry about that. That goes away, and as that fades, you're going to remain, you're going to be left with, a beautiful powdery tuberose ylang ylang chanel vision of a positive optimistic future and in fact i i said this in my other reviews of chanel number no. 22 it is the most giving chanel number no. 5 perfume uh from the time when coco chanel was alive now things are changing because perfume has evolved and also we have new releases coming out and this is where the knights in shining armor come to play a role in the fairy tale. Believe it or not, on my journey of discovering and smelling Chanel number no. 22, and I have Yoro Parfum here, pure perfume on my chest, and I have Yoro Toilette here. Um, actually, let me refresh the Yoro Toilette a little bit because I sprayed this many hours ago. Rachel King says, I learned that from the oh, Osmotech in Paris. Oh, thank you for letting me know about that. Rachel says, so many people asked what she was wearing during 1921. She was convinced to release it also for her store in 1922, according to the Osmotech in Paris. Thank you so much for letting me know. I just know the story of her niece uh, who inherited all of Coco's private clothes. And uh, she said, well, Auntie, she called her Auntie Coco. Auntie Coco was always wearing Chanel Number no. 5. And sometimes Queer de Roussy. And she said that in all her pockets, of her jackets, she always found tissues and they still smelled of Chanel Number no. 5. She would even pour Chanel Number no. 5 in her fireplace uh, in um, at 31 Rue Cambon. She would also put it in, inside of clothes, uh, bed sheets, pour a little bit in the bathtub. I mean, so... Justine Picardy, in her biography of Chanel, also states that when she went to visit uh, Gabrielle Bruni Palace, which is uh, Chanel's niece, in her biography of Chanel, Justine Picardy recalls the moment when uh, Gabrielle Bruni Palace allows Justine to go into the closet where all of Auntie Coco's uh, clothes are still hanging and she recalls a moment where she was allowed to wear a, a coat put her hand into the pocket like one automatically does when one puts on a coat and felt that there was a tissue inside pulled it out and it smelled of number five so interesting that the osmotec says that we have other uh documents uh, you know i'm an avid chanel uh, biography reader so i have many many books on the history of coco chanel um by the way, you should also check out on my main channel uh, a list. I've kind of compiled a list of the five books you should read. If you can't, you know, read 20 or you don't want to read 20, 30 books on the life of Coco Chanel, there's like the five best ones that I suggest in that particular video. Also, uh, just to begin it and end it 
with a simple comment. I know people come in these Chanel videos and say, oh, nice, everything nice. But did you know that she was a collaborator of the bad guys during the Second World War? I'm not going to even say it. No, all debunked. She was not. She also had a lot of gay friends. She was not homophobe. One of her best friends was Jean Cocteau. By the way, this hibiscus was inspired uh, by Jean Cocteau's movie from the Cruise Collection last year. Anyway, uh, Cocteau and uh, Chanel were very, very big friends. In fact, it is also said that Jean Cocteau, uh, because she helped him a lot with his theater career, he was gay, openly gay, by the way. Um, Cocteau is spelled with a C. Coco is spelled with a C or Chanel is spelled with a C. So he was also a designer, an artist, a, a painter, a drawer, a sketcher, but he was also a theater maker and a movie maker and a director. But to thank her for helping him begin his career in Paris because she would subsidize secretly his theater pieces, would go to the theaters and say, here's the money. I want to produce his piece. Just don't tell him I gave you the money. He's a great guy. I don't want him to feel obliged or guilty or anything. So legend wants it that he then, to thank Coco for her friendship, created the double C logo. The intertwined two Cs that the brand Chanel is never going to tell you. They're going to talk to you about Aubazine and the orphanage and the chandelier and her that ugly thing hanging in 31 Rue Cambon with the thing that's supposed to resemble double C. Girl, that's the reason for double C. No, I go my route and um, Cocteau. It's a C for Cocteau and the other C is for Coco. So it's to thank her for their friendship and to kind of solidify that friendship in a visual matter that he gifted her the double C. It's also just another one of those legends. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything is just alleged. But we all choose our stories as Coco chose her story. She would often say in interviews, you know, I get lost in the labyrinth of my own myth because I keep changing it. It is my myth to change. It is my life to talk about. It is my story to reinvent, to rewrite as often as I want. So we all have our stories to tell and we all have our stories to choose to tell, to embellish, to make prettier or uglier according to how we fe feel and see fit. Nothing better than perfumes to create kind of that aura, that beautiful light surrounding a moment in time, like a story that you want to tell or share with others, or um, a moment that you that you actually live with somebody without necessarily living it through words, but just living it through emotions. A perfume can deliver the best together with music, probably the best framework for these special moments in time. And Chanel number 22 delivers. Boy, does it deliver. So closing that chapter of was Coco or was Coco not the bad guy? No, she was not. And also Coco is not the bad guy in this fairy tale. But the knights in shining armor, remember I was mentioning them? Who are these knights in shining armor? I do believe, and now this is just my version of the fairy tale, I do believe that certain perfumers understood the magic of Chanel number no. 22 and that they went through a lot of effort to extrapolate number no. 22 from underneath the shadow of the big sister and give it its own spotlight to shine. Not only that, but certain perfumers were so obsessed with Chanel number no. 22 in this fairy tale that they wanted to create their own version of it. Subtly. Almost sneakily. Did they manage, though? Well, let's just say one of these knights was not in shining armor. He was living in the last phase of Coco's life when she was also alive, and he delivered some bitter sheepras, like ashtrays, like the ashtrays that she would leave behind every day because she smoked till her dying day, Coco. And that would be Henri Robert. With his last perfume, Cristal, he delivered literally a sheepra ashtray, <laughs> which was almost a bitter fragrance uh, that represented Coco in her last years. 
it is literally like a photograph of Coco Chanel when you smell Cristal or the toilet. And it is, it is sad because he knew how sad she was, how lonely she was in, in her final years and how isolated she was in her final years and um, depressed, really. But then after she passed away in 1971 and after a couple of years, Jacques Paul became the head perfumer for Chanel, something happened. He tried to embellish the bitter smells of the 70s, 60s and 70s that Henri Robert left. So he tried to sweeten up Chanel number no. 19 with his, eau de toilette, with his eau de parfum iteration. He tried to turn Cristal into a happy fragrance with uh, releasing the eau de parfum. He also wanted to give his own signature for Chanel Number no. 5 by creating the Eau de Parfum in the mid-80s release, Eau de Parfum concentration of Chanel Number no. 5. He then, because the Vadheimers asked him, hey, do you want, could you like create some, we love, one of the Vadheimer brothers loved uh, Bois des Iles. Can you create a Bois des Iles for men, special edition, something, something. Bois des Iles is a unisex fragrance, but whatever, you know how men are. Oof. Delicate and fragile, fragile little animals, aren't they? And then uh, Bois Noir came out, which then turned into Egoiste, which is a sandalwood concoction that smells of Bois des Iles, but in a more mass appealing way. Even though Egoiste flopped in many countries in Europe, it's still in distribution to this day. But also Jacques Paul will then continue on and is going to try to tackle Chanel number no. 5 yet again and try to modernize it for today's standards hence releasing Chanel number no. 5 au premier which is the least liked of all of the uh, flankers of Chanel number no. 5 personally Jacques Paul leaves and uh, retires and his uh, son takes over you know, talk about uh, keeping it in the family. <laughs> it's, it's impossible to get hired by Chanel unless you don't even either have a relationship with someone in there or your family has been working there already. So Olivier Polge becomes the head perfumer for Chanel after his dad, Jacques Polge, retires. And Olivier Polge is also going to try to tackle the mo his take on Chanel number no. 5 it, when in 2016 um, Chanel releases Olivier Polge's Chanel number no. 5 Lo. But what does all this have to do with number 22? Well, in my fairy tale, these knights in shining armor actually really wanted to deliver new iteration, fresh iterations of number 22. Of course, the Maison Chanel of today wants to continue releasing products that make money. Hence why last year Chanel No. 5 received its 100th uh, birthday celebration with a special collection dedicated to it, albeit a travesty and an advent calendar, albeit another travesty, but we digress. And Chanel de Maison also, you know, told every 10 years, every 10 to 12 years, Chanel re- invents Chanel number no. five with a new flanker. That's why we had Au Premier. That's why we have Lo. Truth be told, Lo, in its name only, not in the way it smells, but Chanel number no. five Lo was already released in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. It was a flanker that was launched in the 60s and 70s and then discontinued. Now they're reutilizing the same name. It's a different smell now, but just saying. But number 22 was apparently never a bestseller enough for this huge, money-hungry établissement, which is Chanel, governed by the Wertheimers. Uh, you know, Chanel number 22 doesn't make much money. So, no, you're not going to be allowed to make a flanker of it, to modernize it for the 80s, for the 90s, for the 2000s. No, Jacques Polge, no. No, Olivier Polge, no. And yet, in my fairy tale, secretly they managed to do 
just that. Both Jacques Polge and Olivier Polge created for their time their version of Chanel number 22. Hmm. What would those versions be? Well, this is where our fairy tale takes a little break because we're going to go through another journey. But keep that in mind. Our fairy tale continues. But before, before it continues, let me blend in a couple of pictures for you. The ads of Chanel number 22. We're celebrating 22. So let's do a couple of Chanel 22 ads throughout history. So this is the latest one uh, made by yours truly. Since Chanel did not want to celebrate Chanel number 22's birthday, 100th birthday, I did it. So I uh, have the most beautiful relationship with the most wonderful, wonderful human beings that work in one of the Chanel uh, beauty boutiques where I always purchase a lot of the products from Chanel. Um, so the lovely, lovely sales associate there, I asked, listen, I was very honest. I said, listen, Chanel is not celebrating the 100th birthdays, or the 100th birthday of Chanel number 22. So, but I'm going to. So could you give me any sort of promotional material you have on this fragrance? And then she said, oh, Deco, we have nothing. I only have these perfume cards. And she gave me whatever she had left. There was like five or six of them. And I said, thank you. I'll make something out of that. So I put the number 22 perfume cards and all of the gift wrapping for this holiday season of 2022. Plus those little trinkets, the little star, the moon, the Chanel perfume bottle trinkets. I decorated it all. And turned it into a Chanel number 22 holiday ad campaign. Okay, so I just did this um, for my Instagram account to celebrate. By the way, you can check me out on Instagram, Super Deco Backup, all spelled together. But you can also check out my other Instagram account dedicated to my Chanel collection uh, called Deco CC, all spelled together there as well. So you can check. Uh, you can check out the, the photos that I post uh, there, also videos. But yeah, Jesus says, Chanel could never. Soraya said, stunning. Thank you. Aaron says, wow. Gloria says, oh, I saw this on Instagram. So beautiful. Thank you, guys. Debbie says, beautiful picture. Thank you. Yeah, Aaron, yes, we're on a cliffhanger with the knights in shining armor. But now this is not to toot my own horn. I'm not saying, oh, look what a great photo I did. That's not the point. The point is I really tried hard to celebrate number 22 with whatever Chanel gives us today. And what they give us today is literally, if you can find it in the beauty boutiques, these little tiny perfume cards that you spray the perfume on, that's all they give us. And, uh, and these boxes, these are the bo these are these boxes that I, that I got because I did purchase something. So the gifts are wrapped in these boxes. And then the box, as you can see, they don't have the, the little perfume card on it. I, I placed the perfume card on it to make it look like it's a Chanel number 22 holiday season um so these so this is let's just say the latest not official because i'm not related with chanel in any way with the brand i have nothing to do with the brand i'm just a customer and a fan so just to be very clear uh Ch chanel did not sponsor this video and chanel did not pay a dime for this video nor do they know that i'm making this video i'm just making this out of my love of Chanel number 22. So I'm not associated with the brand in any way, shape or form. Here I, I uh, in my little plastic bag to protect them, I have these paper cards. These are the perfume cards that, hold on, let me delicately take it out so it doesn't get squished. I archive everything, you guys. I don't throw away anything. Even the, the bags, when you buy something from Chanel, the, uh, the ribbons, the, the paper camellias, whether they be paper or made out of fabric, I preserve everything. I preserve everything to such a point where certain things are like insanely preserved. So for example, this is the current version of the number 22 perfume spray cards, right? But I also have one, the first one released back in 2007, 
Now, you might think, wait, they look the same, Jacob. What's wrong? You know, well, okay, so there's a lot of light here, so you might not see, but the newer version, so Chanel has upped their production uh, value of these perfume cards in general for the entire Liz Exclusives range. But the current version of the 22 perfume card is em embossed and the first version is flat. So the first version that came out in 2007 is not embossed. It is a completely flat paper with a print on top. These are no longer in production. It's the archival mouse in me that uh, is now telling you this stuff. Probably a lot of you don't even care, but I live for this shit. <laughs> this is so special. And this is the embossed version. You can see it's also glossy. And then in the back, you can see that it's... Well, there's a lot of light here, so you might not be able to see. Uh, you can see that it's embossed. and the shiny print in the back, so. So yeah, the current versions are embossed. The first versions were not. Um, oh, RN says, I will never get tired of saying this. Chanel needs a Jacob Museum uh, of his Chanel archives. Oh, honey, this video, we're gonna get, we're gonna see a lot and we're gonna learn a lot in this video. So let me show you. Okay, so this is the latest iteration, my humble homage to Chanel number 22. So this is the not official ad of Chanel number 22, one that I just made. But let's now go into history. Here is the perfumer responsible for Chanel number 22. This is Ernest Beau, you guys. Soak it in. Big nose. He has a big nose, doesn't he? <laughs> yep, he had a big nose. What a genius. What a genius. He spent a lot of time in Russia, also during the First World War, where allegedly he concocted the idea and the recipe for Chanel number five. In fact, Legend wants it that Chanel Number no. 5 was already set in stone before Coco started telling him, hey, add more of this, take out more of that. We don't know. Always a legend. It's all a myth and it's all a legend. So, you know, as they say, to each their own. We don't really know. But Debbie says he's handsome. Yeah, he, he looks like a person who enjoys flavors, who enjoys savoring life eating it up <laughs> you know what i mean but uh anyway ta. um did i for the hold on where am i so this is ernest beau he's unfortunately no longer with us he passed away quite a while ago but uh he does leave us with some of the most beautiful chanel perfumes of all time that are still in production today being gardenia queer de russie Bois des Îles, number five, and Chanel number 22. Thank you, Ernest Beau, for 100 years ago <laughs> making Coco release number 22. Let's go into the ads. Okay, so sorry. There's another, another moment here. This is a close-up of uh, the current version of the print card little perfume cards that i just showed you in little this is the big version this is how big they are they are you could say a little bit bigger than the stickers on the 200 milliliter bottles so you can see how this is a little bit smaller than this and even smaller still is the sticker on the on the 75 mil and of course even smaller yet still the sticker on the parfum jesus says he passed away 1961 yeah i'm telling you a long while ago ernest Beau passed away and i just love the simplicity of this design it just gets me every single time. Now, as we go on a journey through the ads of Chanel number 22, 
Uh, just I want to point out a little detail how the font has also changed in time. So yes, there was a time where underneath a little little O underneath uh, above uh, the end, there was a little dot underneath or a little line. Um, with time, Chanel simplifies everything, streamlines it more and more and more, and takes away more and more of the details. The font of the number five and of the number twenty-two used to be more Art Deco back in the day, right? So the two was a little bit more curved. Uh, it wasn't that straightforward like it, like you see on this particular current version of the um, font and logo of Chanel number 22. Number 22 had a slightly more curved two. At the, at the tips were more curved inward. So this is also interesting to know if you are looking for vintage Chanel number 22. Um, don't think just because the font is slightly different from the current version of it, just because it's slightly different, don't think that you are getting um, a non-authentic product. You know what I mean? Because Chanel changed the fonts ever so slightly throughout the decades. So let's see the next picture. Oh yeah, you love the font. Wonder what type that is. Uh, it's kind of close to Arial, but it's not really. It's Chanel's own font. Okay, let's see. So there you have it. So this is from a magazine from the 60s. Interesting to note that in the 60s, the Badrouchage wax stamp, uh, as you can see, carries a single C on the black stamp, not a double C. And there is a dot underneath the O, like I mentioned before. Number 22 is uh, the font is slightly different. The two is more curved downwards. So if we compare it to the current version, much simpler and cleaner, and the 60s version, slightly more downwards, the, the, the two. Mm. The bottles back then did not state whether or not the concentration was parfum or not. The bottle doesn't state parfum like today. If you purchase the only concentration size available for the extra, and nowadays it's 15 milliliter right and that will be this size and it always states on the bottle on the sticker at the bottom that it's a parfum so nowadays you will find the parfum concentration listed right down there as of 2022 things might change in the future with chanel things just keep changing even though the evolution is ever so slight and delicate and you don't notice if you don't really look closely but things keep changing. Matter of fact, even the stopper changed. You see how more flat that stopper is on, on the ad campaign as opposed to this one. Now, this bottle was purchased back in 2009. Since 2009, uh, the stoppers have changed yet again. They have become more slim, a little bit thinner, a little bit closer to, to what you see here. Not quite that slim, but since 2009, they have become slimmer than this. And I do, in fact, have a good example here. I have a bottle of Coromandel. So if we put Parfum Coromandel right next to number 22, or let me put them side by side like this. Now it's going to be hard. Hold on. The number 22 is thicker. The stopper... Uh, there you go. You can see that the stopper is thicker on the uh, number 22 bottle than on the Coromandel bottle. Yeah, it's like one third smaller, a little bit smaller. Um, let me just put Coromandel back so that it doesn't fall and open up, could you imagine? So let me show you the next pitta. Yes, believe it or not, uh, in the um, 40s, but also 50s, 60s, there was, was also an Eau de Cologne version. 
of Chanel number 22. And uh, on the top, you also have an advertisement that says number five, Bois de Zille, Gardenia, Russia, Russia leather, not even Russian leather, number 22. Um, what does this bottle remind us of? Um, it is literally almost one-to-one, -one, the bottle that Chanel reintroduced just a couple of years ago with their Les Zoux range. So we have Paris Venice, uh, Paris uh, Biarritz, Paris Deauville, Paris Riviera, Paris Paris, Paris Edinburgh, uh, all in this type of bottle. Now this was a splash bottle. Today they are spray bottles, a little bit more streamlined perhaps. The stopper is a little bit bigger. But already what we saw in the 30s and 40s as a design for perfume bottles are, are kind of br Chanel brought them back again, uh, slightly more modified. And yes, Chanel number no. 22 did have an Eau de Cologne concentration as well for a certain period of time. It's been discontinued since many, many years, however. Let me show you the next picture. Here again, magazines throughout the years. Interesting to note how um, black and white advertisements for Chanel number no. 22, whether it be Chanel number no. 22, number no. 5, Puy de Roussy, uh, Gardenia, Bois de Zille, they always utilized as much as they could the black and white uh, limitations, you know, for advertisements. So what we see in this ad is a fade, a very, very beautiful fade, actually, for that printing era from light to dark but then within the bottle, they've lightened it even more. And there's an even lighter gra graduation, um, graduation, a lighter grade or fade within the bottle itself. And then for the stopper, they highlight the stopper as if it were like a diamond. And to achieve all of that with black and white print is really, really masterful. So... You know, for today's standards, you might say, well, you know, it's a black and white picture. Does it really render the idea? Yes, it does. Uh, people have also kind of forgotten how to deal with black and white print and photography. So not, I don't think many people would be able to deliver such a beautiful image in black and white today. Very straightforward, very simple. This is when Chanel still believed in number 22 when number 22 got, had received its own humongous ad campaign, an entire page in a magazine, whether it be Vogue magazine, Marie Claire, Elle, whatever they had back in the day, an entire page dedicated to number 22 cost a lot of money to advertise for the brand. But they did. They believed in it. Let's go on to the next one. Take a sippy. Hmm. Here's another interesting, bigger format. Um, now, this particular concentration is just the Eau de Cologne. Interesting how Chanel has today. These are the bottles. They're back again. Slightly modified, but these are the bottles. Now they have a magnetic closure. These stoppers are a little bit bigger, but that's the bottle. It already existed in the 40s and the 50s. And the Eau de Cologne also existed in the 40s and the 50s. Jacques Polge reintroduced the Eau de Cologne within the Les Exclusives range. Smells quite different from the Eau de Cologne back in the day. It's more modern today. It's a modern take on Eau de Cologne uh, with a different type of vanilla in the dry down. Actually, I don't believe that there was any vanilla in the OG Chanel Eau de Cologne. But... In this particular square or rectangular uh, bottles, you could also get number 22. Not just in the rounded bottle, but you could also get number 22 Eau de Cologne. If you bought a bigger size, you could also get it in this bottle. The number 22 Eau de Cologne was also available in these big bottles. Oli says, nobody does packaging like Chanel. Let's, let me show you the next pizza. Also, an ad campaign from a magazine, uh, Surround Yourself with Chanel number no. 22. Look how the font changed again. The 22 is a slightly different font. However, they preserve the Chanel font as much as they can. It is different. Each single letter is spelled out more separated from one another. 
uh, than, than we, we have today. So the, today's Chanel font is much more tight. You see how the C is closer to the H and the H is closer to the A, the A is closer to the N and so on and so forth. Well, back then there was a bigger separation between the, the letters. And the E was a little bit more squished. So was the L. And the 22 was thicker. Now, surround yourself with the perfume of romance. This is from the 60s. Interesting to note that round, round about this time, now, in, but mind you, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, Chanel number no. 22 was not advertised, like we've seen in the ad before, um, all of these fragrances had that fade background and very dramatic, very art deco vibe, right? But something happens in the 60s. Chanel number no. 22 receives a revamping. And in fact, we also see the introduction of this white spray, plastic spray bottle with the metal ring, which I have right here. The ad campaign starts showcasing white florals. Yes, the perfume is a white floral. The perfume is a tuberose heavy floral, ylang ylang heavy floral, jasmine, rose heavy floral, um, vanilla heavy floral. But we see this word romance pop up. Okay. So now let me just shift to the side because I thought I was going to shift automatically, but I didn't. All right. Now, we see the introduction of number 22 as a wedding perfume. Perfume for love, spring, weddings, you know, your wedding. Like what perfume to wear to a wedding in Chanel number 22? Somewhere around the 60s, number 22 got that reputation of being a wedding fragrance. Which, mind you, I'm all for it. I, you know, I would wear it to a wedding, to a funeral, to a bachelorette party, to a concert. Like any occasion is great for number 22. But to kind of heavily push the concept of it's a wedding fragrance only. Mm. Let, let's see some more. Let's see some more. A beautiful picture, by the way. Don't get me wrong. And, and look at all the jasmine flowers surrounding her. Gorgeous. The hair, amazing. It's like flames of hair. It's a beautiful picture. Uh, it's actually a beautiful ad campaign. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I'm against this ad campaign. I think it's beautiful and I love it. I just think number 22 is much more than just a wedding fragrance. Okay, let's see next one. RN says, interesting because I think tuberose is used in India for weddings. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, hey, Louis. Yeah, have a great day. Have a great day at work. The, the perfume of romance again. Now, this is a beautiful picture. This endless field. Again, we have this summer vibe, spring, summer vibe. The lady has short sleeves, her hat. She's in this meadow, floral garden. And again, we have a change in the font. The Chanel is spelled thinner. And the no, N-O for number 22 is, uh, the N-O is kind of almost at the same height. Uh, this is from the 60s. In fact, you can see the stamp on the badrochage, the wax seal has one C, not an interlocking C. It's very dreamy. Yeah. This is one of my favorite ad campaigns because it's not necessarily directly connected to the perfume, but it sets a tone and a vibe. Um, and then the fragrance is just kind of placed in a corner, but what does it do? The glass kind of enhances and s saturates the background through the glass even more. It almost is trying to tell you through this perfume, you're going to put these special dreamy moments into perspective. And uh, even though the lady is the focal point in this picture, pretty so we acknowledge her first, but then our gaze shifts to the bottle right after that. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous advertisement. Subtle. The name Chanel is huge, obviously, so it's not that subtle. But what is she doing? Where, where is she going? She's lost in this field of endless plants and flowers. And it's idyllic. 
it's an idyllic landscape and we are we want to be there with her now i of course you know being crazy as i am i immediately think oh my god how many ticks are in that grass i gotta be careful girl you're gonna get bitten by ticks so but uh if you take that away <laughs> Just my immediate fear of ticks. If you take that aside, or snakes, um, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful vision. It's a great ad campaign. Beautiful ad campaign. The next one. Here you go. Again, the perfume of romance. Chanel number 22. Now the font is getting tighter. Uh, they are connecting the H. They're bringing it in a little bit closer to the C. And the A is closer to the H. Again, we have... Every time we have a lady in these ad campaigns, they're dressed in white. Now, the packaging of Chanel Number no. 22 is white as well, white and gold. So the dresses are summery. She's collecting flowers, mostly white flowers. It is a white floral fragrance after all. Um, there's a little sun protection involved. Even the lady in the meadow had a hat in her hand. And this lady has a hat on her head. Um, Interesting to note the ingredients, you know, we have aldehydes, neroli, white floral, lily, white, tuberose in the head notes, in the top notes, lily of the valley, orange blossom, the middle notes, ylang ylang, jasmine, white rose, nutmeg, and then base notes, iris, vanilla, vetiver, and incense, which comes and goes. You know, I have the feeling that the current concentrations kind of deliver the incense yet again. Even I'll bite a little bit lighter, but I, I do feel that deep down inside there's still a little bit of incense going on there. But this is such a beautiful vision. It also, we're not in the meadow anymore, but we're kind of at the entrance of a forest. You know, behind her is a tree and a darker landscape. It could be a, a darker forest. And in front of her is this meadow you know, she might get lost in this forest. She might want to get lost in this forest. But interesting how in the 60s, their concept of romance is solitary. Did you notice? The concept of romance, they, they call it the perfume of romance. And in every picture that we've seen thus far, the woman is alone. She's enjoying herself. I love that subtlety. You know, she doesn't need a man or another woman to be happy. It's like her with her perfume. The romance is actually happening between the wearer and their fragrance. It's so gorgeous. She's dreamy, collecting flowers. She's just enjoying her life. She's having a wonderful day on her own with her perfume. This is already the third picture that we were seeing where they say uh, in the ad in the advertisement they state that the perfume it's the perfume of romance but the person is alone or are they there could be a big bad wolf in that forest but the romance is between the wearer and the fragrance that's what it what's implied even though at the same time they're also implying She's getting, you know, she's going to get married. There's going to be a wedding. Interesting. But things change throughout the decades. But let's see, what's the next one? <clears throat> the Perfume of Romance. Again, um, this one is from uh, 1970, I believe, early 70s. Again, a white dress. Again, it's summer. Look at that gorgeous, oh my God, the backlight. In fact, I have backlight here. This is why you can see this kind of... You see, if I put my hand, I create a shadow. It's because I have backlight. So what they did here in this photo, it's very heavily backlit. So her hair is almost transparent. I mean, it's not transparent, but the light kind of goes through her hair and it makes it glow. And it just makes everything dreamy. And you could see every fly away, every bit of hair that's kind of flying away. It's kind of so vibrant and alive. I love, love backlighting photos. It just makes the subject pop so much more to the to the forefront and the um the wicker baskets are getting bigger and bigger from ad campaign to ad campaign and the amount of flowers that they're carrying is like more and more but now she's not in a forest anymore in fact we can see that now 
there's a mansion or a building there as well because in that right here in this section here you see architecture so she's at the foot of a big mansion or a house or a castle even you know and she's collected her flowers and put some in her hair that she's going to go back in but again it's her spending time with herself in nature enjoying freedom enjoying the breath of fresh air Debbie says this looks more bridal. <clears throat> but another thing changes. She's looking into the camera. She's breaking the fourth wall. She's calling us in. She's kind of telling you, I have a secret and I can share it with you. Come with me. And number 22, it has a secret as well. You know, very, very beautiful. Let me show you the next one. Again, the perfume of romance. Now, this is literally... I saw this ad and I fell in love so much so that I used it as the um, altered, in, in an altered version, of the I used it as the thumbnail for this video, for the live stream. The thumbnail might change for the actual released video later on, but for now, and, and it's giving me major picnic at Hanging Rock vibes. Um, it's just so gorgeous. Oh, Velasquez, thank you. Velasquez says your hibiscus uh, brooch uh, and these images are resonating so well as well. Thank you. You know, I don't leave anything to chance. Everything was studied into detail <laughs> to deliver this celebration for number 22's 100th birthday. But here we have two ladies with these gorgeous floral compositions on their hats, on, the, on their straw hats. Now, the floral composition on the hats, they might be actual fake flowers. They might be Chanel flowers, like silk made like, you know, like this one. Uh, of course, a hibiscus doesn't need so much detail like those flowers there, but they could be also silk flowers or cotton flowers, or they could also be real flowers. But again, each lady is kind of on her own, with her own self, each one in her own dream. One is not even, you know, one has the head down, you don't even see the head, it's just the hat and She's kind of working with the flowers. And the other one is kind of in this dreamy state as well. Uh, Bohemian, says Jesus. Mm -hmm. Kev says, this is Gorge. Yeah. Ah, Trina says, this is my favorite ad for number 22 perfume. I love the way you elaborate your reviews. So rich, says Talia. Thank you. And well balanced. I'd love to watch your review. Uh, Bala Versailles by Jean Des Desprez. That's an interesting one as well. One day, maybe. No promises, though. <laughs> so this is a thicker stopper on the number 22 bottle. And uh, what does it say there? Perfume, cologne. Uh -huh. Underneath the bottle, it tells us what they're selling. Perfume, cologne, and bath products. Oh, to have a Chanel 22 soap or body powder or body lotion, or bath lotion, or shower gel today. Oh, that would be amazing. The frame, it's very rare for Chanel to do this, but this was kind of 60s, but also 70s style. Some brands would do it also in the 70s. This rounded white frame within the black frame, something Chanel, I think, has never done since. They're very, very particular about their very squared, edged off frames. So this is a rare instance where Chanel was kind of more daring for their standards by kind of curving that white frame instead of rendering it very sharp. Beautiful. It's just gorgeous. Just beautiful. And the saturation the, and the graininess of the picture, the, the chiaroscuro, it, everything is just beautiful. Really beautiful. It just makes you want to look at it for hours and hours as if it were a movie. This tells a whole story to me. 
a very French movie, mind you. Huh? This is giving me 60s French vibes where only two sentences are spoken in a two-hour movie and the rest of the movie is just silence and close-ups and weird edits. But I'm here for it. You know, when it comes to 22, that's where it's at. And again, most of the light and the lightest spot in the photo is within the bottle of number 22. The bottom half of the bottle is like overlit. It kind of shines from within. Again, a very, very masterful uh, technique uh, for black and white print. This is gorgeous. They've, they've used the full potential of black and white photography and black and white print to render this image. Just really breathtaking. Um, now, Jesus says it's not Chanel at all, this ad. Interesting that you say that. Uh, don't forget, you guys, there was a distribution uh, difference uh, in the 60s uh, between Europe and America. And in fact, uh, also in the 70s, so Chanel was turning into almost like a drugstore fragrance. Uh, in fact, uh, Chanel took... <clears throat> regained control of all of that pretty soon and took them took the perfumes off of the market and then rebranded and then kind of relaunched everything much more limited and exclusive because in America they were becoming available everywhere and it was just you know the perfumes were also made in the USA in many cases like Chanel number no. 22 or also Chanel number no. 5 so this is also from an era where Chanel was do, uh, doing different marketing for America than for uh, Europe. And so this also comes. So bear that in mind as well. This comes from that time. Uh, let me show you the next picture. Uh, Chanel was not alive during this picture. Uh, no, yes, she was. She was alive during this picture. But don't forget that Coco, Ch Coco Chanel, she passed away in 1971. Uh, this picture is, I believe, from the late 60s. But don't forget that uh, Coco had no control over her perfumes. The Vatheimers took almost entire control over her fragrances. So, yeah, sad. Okay, so here is a uh, poorly photographed or lit ad. The ad is not green, but um, anyway, this is how the photo was taken from the magazine. We've already seen the lady in front of the forest with the basket of flowers. Now with the addition of the perfume and bath range, we have a dusting powder there in this picture. Oh my God, breathtaking. And then we have uh, the Cologne, and then we also have the perfume, the Cologne in the square bottle now, like I've mentioned before, here you have it. And then you have the Extrait, which Chanel still makes today, but not in plastic. That one is was plastic, right? That little Extrait. Now they make them here, I have it, Chanel number five. Extra. Now they make them in lacquered metal. So this is was already in production in the 60s and 70s. So Chanel, you see how slightly they modify things? It's still recognizable as that OG lipstick or extra uh, spray, but but it's no longer plastic. Now it's metal, it's lacquered, it's a different system. Slight, subtle modifications. Just gorgeous. I mean, I want the whole collection. What can I tell you? Chanel, you could have, at least for the 100th birthday of Chanel number 22, brought back the bath range, e even in limited capacity. Like, okay, you know, at, at least give us a body lotion. At least a body lotion. Come on. Anyway, what does it say here? Uh, when I wear number 22, I remember of the sweet things in my life. Ah, I remember all the sweet things in my life. Oh, when I wear Chanel number 22, I remember all the sweet things in my life. Gorgeous. Let me show you the next one. Here we have 70s and 80s. Things are changing. Look at this. Now they're revamping for America uh, the ad campaign for, 19, uh, for uh, number 22. Now they call it the beginning. 
romance by the 80s was considered an obsolete word. It was by marketing, brand marketing, romance was a heavy word. It was an um, antiquated word. By the 80s, romance was something that your mom, dad, or your grandparents had when they were young. But you, the new youth, has new beginnings. So when it comes to romantic comedies, they did call them romantic comedies, but they did not call them romance comedies in the 80s because romance was considered obsolete. So it's it doesn't come as a surprise to me that they would just switch it up and call it the beginning. They're not kissing or anything. They're just holding hands, right? She's passing by him, and I don't know if they're dancing or doing Ring Around the Rosy or something, but... And look how Chanel follows the opulence of the times. We're getting, we're going into carefree times, the 80s. Um, money is flaunted more readily. People are just more into enjoying life, having fun. And as the times become more opulent, I have noticed this, you guys. So does the stopper for the perfume. Never has the stopper for Chanel Extraits been that thick as in the 80s and 90s. The shoulder pad era, the opulence era, the big hair era. As everything grows, as money grows, as the, 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 the whole yuppie era begins, Chanel adapts in their own special little subtle way, and their stopper comes chubbier, cheruby. It's a cheruby stopper now. It's a cheruby stopper. Um, now, we're going through these weird times. Perfumes are not going through the best of times. I mean, you know, even Chanel is discontinuing most of their bath products, bath range for most of their perfumes. And in fact, also their stoppers are getting thinner. Again, they're again getting thinner. So I have the feeling that the Chanel Extrait Stopper is always a, a direct indicator of the economical times we're going through. If a Chanel Extrait Stopper gets thicker, you know good times are ahead. When it starts getting thinner, you know we got a recession on our hands, to say the least. I love the vibrant energy of this ad. I love that they chose a white font so that almost number 22 the beginning is almost merging with them you can barely read it you know it's kind of hiding between them and um it's beautiful and it's in color it's our first ad in color Roja says that ad's so beautiful to fall in love with your best friend almost it, it there is a freshness about it and also they are maybe in high school not at college you know maybe it looks like they're students but their love is beginning and number 22 is there to mark that occasion. So I think it's a beautifully dynamic ad. While they are in motion, what is still and does not permute in time is actually number 22. It stays still like a colossus there and says, I'll always be your anchor no matter what you need. The graphic design is very different, yeah. Love it. Okay, let me show you the next picture. Okay, so this is um, kind of an, again, an insert in a magazine, two page fold uh, ad campaign for highlights of Chanel products. Um, perfume range, not cosmetics uh, and not creams, but body bath and bath and body and fragrances right so here we have a plethora of fragrances including chanel number 22 sorry my nose is itchy okay so 22 is hold on i have it here as a close-up because the screen is very far away from me so i um <clears throat> have to check it out separately if I can find it now. Okay, here it is. So we have the Eau de Cologne number 22 in one corner. 
We have Chanel number 19. Interesting how they put Chanel number 19 small extrait in front of a bigger extrait. But to not clash with stickers, they just took the sticker off of the bigger bottle. Chanel would never do that today. Today, I think that is uh, a choice they would never make. It is a very, very odd choice to not brand your bottle. Very not untypical for Chanel. It is something they would never do. To literally take the branding off the bottle is very, very, very strange. So it's an anomaly. It's like something you would never do. But they did. They got the body cream for number five. Then they have number 22, uh, Parfum. Now, this is an American ad. In fact, the Parfum is spelled perfume with an E, both on the number 22, number five, and number 19 bottles. They have Chanel for Men, which is Pour Monsieur, Spray Cologne. Chanel for Men Aftershave Moisturizer. Chanel for men or Pomisio soap. Oh my gosh. And uh, and then we have Cristal body lotion. So this is from the 70s then. Wait, what? when was this exactly? I think 19, what does it say? 73? Maybe 73 or 74. And we have number five, extra, next to a round white container which could be body powder like a small version of the talcum or could be also round soap let me show you the next picture now this is from the 30s and 40s in fact as you can see there are some fragrances that are no longer in production advertised here uh, i just wanted to add these extras because they were used as advertisements during the holiday season and since we're doing this live stream during the holiday season i've uh, added this as well uh, one of the perfumes that are no longer in production are glamour in fact you can see chanel glamour chanel is advertised there as well chanel number 22 is next to it chanel number five in the middle uh queer de russie or russia leather is next and then gardenia comes after that fascinating to see the gift coffres, the gift boxes that they create for the holiday season. Chanel could never anymore. They're too stingy to do a special set just for the holiday season. That extra little pump spray in the middle, oh my gosh, to die for. These little tiny refillable bottlets, the talcum, the little travel set of the three in one it's just really really beautiful louis vuitton copied the the first um wait hold on this this concept the first one down here with their <clears throat> where they sell you like five or three of of their perfumes in a little round box like this and you lift it up and you have them standing like just exactly like this next to each other the bottles are different but the concept is the same so louis does this today Chanel did it in the 30s, 40s. And I love how they knew back then what they were selling for. They're like, perfumes for personalities. <laughs> you got personality, you wear Chanel. Conversation over. It's a beauty though, isn't it? Such a beauty. These times long gone. Oh, the round one, the first one is so cute. It's super cute, Serena. Yeah, Gloria says, this is making me nostalgic. Yeah. Let me show you the next picture. You can always rewind, obviously, and uh, pause uh, the frame and, you know, soak it, let it soak in as much as you want. You guys, this is so delicate and beautiful. And these are all... Well, forever, they didn't really have airbrush back then. They had something similar, but it's hand-drawn. Then they have these extra layers on top of each other, photographed, or printed. This took ages to make. This is so beautiful. So beautiful. <clears throat> 
look at the little bracelet, how extra drawn it is and how the hand is kind of letting all of these products hang. But, and they're balancing each other. Obviously, the proportions are completely off. These products are not these this tiny in real life, but it doesn't matter, you know. The most treasured name in perfume, Chanel, also with a font we've never seen after, right? Uh, the most treasured name in perfume being the font we've never seen uh, after. And uh, I like that one. Very holiday, says Trina. Gorgeous, says Jesus. Velasquez says, I want a poster. Yeah, this is... And this is why... What I mean, you know, when they celebrated Chanel Number no. Five's hundredth birthday, and they did the factory collection, and they delivered those posters with those kind of factory products photographed, like what a way, to, you know? No, th this is art. Anyway, it's just beautiful, beautiful, and this took a lot of time to make, you know. And a lot of technical savoir-faire, gorgeous. Anyway, so Chanel number no. 22 is also dangling there in those products. So this was Chanel number no. 22 was always there right next to Chanel number no. 5. You know what I mean? Always in its shadow. Always in the shadow of its big sister. Let me see. That's that. That's the end of the ads. Um, now... This mean character in our fairy tale comes and wants money. And if the money doesn't arrive, well, the product gets discontinued. Or if the product doesn't cost the right amount of money, the price will be raised higher and higher and higher to earn more and more money. Interesting, however, how I had a conversation with my sales associate. We were talking about Chanel number no. 22 and in general, the Liz Exclusives range. And she said to me, you know, Jacob, whenever uh, we have our um, like meetings, when the staff gathers and meets up in different parts of the world, you know, when, when they kind of, um, when Chanel calls a bunch of store managers or sales associates to give them a briefing about the new upcoming collections and how the state of the company is and stuff like that. She says every time they talk about Les Exclusives, they always say that they have them just for prestige. They do not make them any money. My jaw dropped because I was like, listen, I know how much these cost. I know the landing cost price of these. Uh, and I know the retail price of these. She's like, yeah, but for the amount of them produced and sold, as opposed to, you know, the rent we got to pay for these buildings, uh, the staff needs to get paid, the production needs to get everything. It's a losing game. This does not make Chanel money. The Les Exclusives are there for prestige. So let that sink in as well. It's not uh, a very lucrative business when it comes to the Les Exclusives, and that's why they're also limiting them to the minimal necessary. <laughs> they don't want to lose more money, you know. But again, I say, well, if you're making them for prestige, then out of prestige reasons, also celebrate the 100th birthday of number 22 and release a money-losing bath lotion, body lotion for one year. If it's, you know, it's prestige, do it. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah, Gloria. This is when everyone dressed up to go shopping. Yeah, that last ad, yes. I still dress up to go shopping, now, depending where I'm going shopping. But it's a special occasion, especially when it comes to Chanel, because I love their perfume so much. So I always have a little extra makeup done. If I'm going to Chanel or just extra perfume on, you know, extra Chanel accessory with me on me when I go. It's just to celebrate the occasion. Um, but prices are a big point as well when it comes to Chanel number no. 22. In general, there is exclusives range. So let's see how the prices 
optional number 22 have are, are doing at the moment. I'm going to show you now the European prices and the dollar prices. And let's see what the Vatheimers are doing there. Let me let me blend in our next chapter. We're going to talk about the number 22 prices. Okay, let me shift to the side a little bit. So, as of today, December 21st, 2022, Chanel number 22 perfume, the extra, uh, the parfum. Also, just to clarify, people have been asking me, like, wait, pure, what, what do you mean when you say pure perfume, parfum, extra? I'm like, it's the same thing, you guys. For me, pure perfume equals extra equals parfum. Okay, otherwise I would be saying eau de parfum, which is a different concentration, or eau de toilette, or eau de cologne. Okay, now the extra, or the parfum, like Chanel calls it, actually they call it both. As you can see on the sticker, they call it parfum. On the side up here, in French, they call it extra, because the extra is the parfum. 15 milliliter, which is the this exact bottle that I have here, this is how big it is, comparatively to my face. Um, 240 euro, okay, for the highest concentration of essential oils, of perfume, of yada yada. And, um, oh yes, yeah, sweet things, it's a beautiful photo, they made, they made the bottle look like a jewel, yes. Curioso says, they are like artifacts of fashion history, <laughs> it's amazing. Now, 240 euro as of now. Now there should be, and there usually is always a price increase every January, February. So this price is going to go up. But let's go through the entire rotation. Let me show you the next. So 240 euro in Europe for the parfum. For the eau de parfum. 200 milliliter bottle, which would be like this. Now, this is how dark it turns when it oxidizes. This is the vanilla. Look how beautiful amber you get. But when it's fresh and brand new, it's this light. And then it turns darker with time. 330 euro for 200 ml eau de parfum. I love these bottles. I love all of them, really. I love, sorry, I hit the mic. I said I love these bottles. I love all of them. Uh, the pure perfumes, uh, as well as the Les Exclusives, 200 mils, 330 euro. And now let me show you the next one, which is 75 milliliter. Sold out, coincidentally. I just took this screenshot earlier today. So number 22, 75 ml, right around the holiday season, sold out. 185 euro for this size. Also, this one... Is a couple of years older now, so you can see how beautiful it's turning darker already, orangey. Man, it dries down so beautifully. Let's add some more. Hmm. Um, 185. Now, interesting to note, up until a couple of years ago, and we're talking before the pandemic, we're talking early 2000s, really, all the way up until 2010, 12, maybe. Uh, the Les Exclusives fragrances were much cheaper in America than in Europe. Like, much cheaper. Uh, it was insane how cheaper they were. Hold on, I'm just taking a picture here. Okay. Uh, it was insane how much cheaper they were. Uh, now the tables have turned ever so dramatically after the pandemic. Let me show you now the prices in America. Now, you know the dollar is almost like the euro at the moment. It's almost one-to-one. -one. It's not, but let's just, for the sake of comparison, say it's one-to-one. -one. We just saw that this perfume cost 240 euro. But it's $280, and €240 Euro includes tax. Here, $280 does not even include tax. So after you add a tax on top, you're over $300. Well, depending what state you're in. But So 
including tax, you're over $300. While in Europe, you're at 240 euro, which is like $240. So it's like $60 cheaper, at least, to buy it in Europe. Plus you get tax refund in Europe, so you get it even cheaper. But even bigger travesty, even bigger travesty is the next one I'm going to show you. Four hundred dollars <laughs> for, for this one. That's insane. It's three hundred thirty euro in Europe, and that's including taxes. Now, when you add taxes on top of this, what is it? Four fifty. That's like one hundred dollar, one hundred ten dollars more than you pay for it in Europe. And they've just did this price increase like last year. It's insane in America. And they're going to have another price increase next year. And I have a sneaky suspicion that the next European price increase is going to bring the prices up like this. They're going to jump from 330 euro to 400 euro. I am very, very, very worried about that. So my suggestion is uh, go buy your... Your Les Exclusives, uh, you got a couple of weeks left, you know, before. This is just alleged. I have a sneaky suspicion that the prices are going to go up. Sorry, I'm taking photos again. I have a sneaky suspicion that the prices are going to go up. And let me show you now the American price in dollars of the uh, 75 milliliter, which would be this one. Number 22. It's available in the U.S. It's sold out in Europe, but not in the U.S. $250. Now, it's 185 euro. That's $65 plus tax on top. So that's around 80 70 to $80 more in America. Sweet Thing says that's abusive. OMG says Jesus. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you. Paige says, love that you're paying tribute to number 22, Jacob. Someone gets it. Yes, I get it. Don't worry. It's out of my comfort zone, says Debbie. Yeah. Gloria says, um, do, uh, do I foresee them hitting as much as $600 in, in a few years? Yes, I do. In 10 years, maybe, if we're still here in 10 years. And uh, this is um, difficult uh, to, to digest. These prices are really high. Um, but when you come, again, Chanel is also trying to run after all the other major brands like Erlan, Dior, Louis Vuitton with their exclusive per perfumes. When you compare them to the prices of the other brands, they're more or less the same, you guys. Um, they all are kind of in that same ballpark of pricing. So with the with the difference, with the exception that I cannot live without my Chanel number 22, but I can live without my Guerlain fragrance. So I'm always going to end up finding money to buy this, but I might skip buying a bottle of two of Guerlain in favor of Chanel number 22 any day, all day. Just saying. But that's just me to each their own. So, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, Serena is asking, do I think that if the Eau de Parfum is worth it, do you enjoy Chanel number 22? Yeah, I love it. Why do you think I'm making this video? <laughs> I don't dedicate an entire live stream to a perfume just like that. You know what I mean? Like, this is a very special occasion for a very special perfume. It's only worth the money that it's worth to you. It's insanely expensive. You know, I know Asa says, I wish my paycheck would increase like the price of literally everything. I know it's insane. <laughs> uh, yeah. Serena says, I understand the prices in general. Unfortunately, I make handmade perfume oils and candles and absolutes and essential oils are extremely expensive. It makes pricing products so difficult. And this is also why I'm telling you guys how, you know, a person very close to me who works at, at Chanel it, it, for beauty and perfume says, Jacob, we don't make money off of Les Exclusives. It's, yes, they are expensive, but they, they're still not money makers. Chanel keeps them around because it's prestige. 
and heritage. So I trust her when she says that. Like she's really honest. Uh, anyway, so that, that those will be the prices. Um, now I want to show you quickly uh, how the bottles look photographed by Chanel today. And I want to showcase how this is their ad campaign, literally. What is their ad campaign of Chanel number 22? Let me show you. So they don't, the bottles, yeah. So they don't uh, print these pictures in magazines. They don't spend any money to advertise Chanel number 22 in Vogue, Elle, Marie Claire, L'Officiel, whatever have you. But they take pictures of them for their website. And so on their website is the only place where we get to see promotional images of these products. So we've just seen ad campaigns from the 60s, from the 50s, from the 80s. A lot of work went into them and they were published in magazines. Now none of that is happening. So they're saving money there. They're not investing any money in ad campaigns and that's millions of dollars saved. And, you know, they hire a professional photographer to do this. I mean, I could have done a better job. Sorry. Like the shadowing is terrible here, but whatever. Uh, but let me show you the next picture, which is a little bit better. So th they usually have uh, two pictures per bottle. This is the second picture on the French website. The American website has a different photo, but I preferred showing this one because it's a little bit more dynamic. At least they twisted the bottle a little bit. Um, you know what I mean? They twisted the bottle a little bit, gave it that shadow falling from the back, gave it a little bit of light. Still, it's a very bland photo taken for an e-commerce. It's a photo for a website that sells a product. It like shows you without distractions, no background, no floral arrangements. It's very, very clear what it is, what you're getting. It's a beautiful photo because I love the object in itself. You know, I love the number 22 bottle. But um, you could have done more, Chanel. It's beautiful in itself. It's almost like saying, hey, we don't need to do anything more like Chanel... Like our perfumes speak for themselves. And I get it. Like that's an approach as well. But add the Chanel logo at the bottom, lift the bottle a little bit higher and print this in Vogue magazine. You know what I mean? Make an ad campaign out of it. I do believe that Chanel number 22 would be a much better seller if Chanel would actually advertise it. But they're, they're not pushing it. Okay, now let me show you the, I think 200 mil is next. Also very flat. Uh, they laid it flat. Light coming from the top, I mean from the side, and then you have that shadow. I'm not a fan of that shadow. Um, 200 mil bottle, very light. You know, the image is very light. So the liquid actually looks lighter than what you get when you buy it fresh. But I mean... It's a beautiful bottle. Listen, I, I love the Chanel number no. 22 bottle. Another interesting point to note, at a certain point with the Eau de Toilettes, so they started off really square cut, the stickers. Then they switched manufacturer of their stickers for a certain period of time. So a couple of these stickers or of the Eau de Toilette, not the, this is the Eau de Parfum here, okay? Um, this is the Eau de Parfum. So this is the Eau de Toilette. And I have an older version here, batch code. You know, batch codes repeat every eight to nine years. But anyway, so this is 5801. And uh, it's rounded off. For a couple of years, their stickers were rounded off at the edges. They were not like pointy cut edges. They were slightly rounded off. And the logo, it had kind of that like shiny glazing on top. It was also an um, etched logo. The, the lacquering of it was not done so clean. It's a little bit sloppy. So um, 
interesting also to note that doesn't mean that uh, the, the fragrance is um, fake. It just actually gives it an even more precise time frame when it was made. So it's actually vital to know that if you want to authenticate a bottle. The rounded little edges on the stickers, they did that for about three or four years. And then they came back to the sharp cut corners of stickers. So let me show you the more dynamic photo of the 22 200 oh no there's none of that okay so well anyway i think i maybe i didn't upload it but so this is the 22 straight cut bottle i mean 75 milliliter bottle but up upright while also laying down same like the 200 milliliter very bland i wonder if i uploaded the other photo is this it or is there another one? Oh yeah there's another one okay so let me show you the next one which I call the more dynamic photo. There you go. They laid it down. They took the stopper off. A little bit of a dramatic shadow added for effect. I mean, we could do better. But, and yes, it's cut off. You don't have the entire bottle on the photo. The photo is literally like this, postcard. Like that's... That's what you get. <laughs> you go on the Shell website, you click on the 200 milliliter uh, number 22, and you're going to get those two photos, and then you're going to get the price. And then you're also going to get the description. So let's see, what does Chanel have to tell us about Chanel number 22 in 2022? So I've scavenged the French website, the American website. The French website has an extra ad. Well, the French website isn't French, but it has an extra added number you can call to make an appointment in Paris to go test the Les Exclusives fragrances. It's for free. Then you get a sales associate that, you know, lets you smell all of them and tells you a little bit of history about them. So anyway, you're not going to see that part. You're going to see the English version. So let me cue those in the description. Okay. Now, here we are reading the, the uh, ingredients, but we're also going to get to the description. The ingredients of the, of the eau de parfum, it doesn't matter, it says size 75 ml, but it's going to be the same list of ingredients also for a 200 ml bottle. So that will be the eau de parfum, which we have here. So there's water listed on the third slot, uh, but alcohol and perfume are top. Uh, alpha isomethyl ionone, benzyl salicylate. Salicylate! You salicylate a little late. You're a little late. Geraniol, hydroxy, citronolol, citronolol, lol, limonin, linolol, lol, lol, uh, cinnamon alcohol. Okay, so anyway, these are all things that if you are a pharmacist, mean something to you. Otherwise, hmm, not so much so. It, there is no jasmine extract in here. They do list jasmine extract in their Coco Mademoiselle oil and low, but not here. Even though jasmine is listed in this in this perfume, you know. So there's a lot of chemical components, but what is interesting is that IL ninety four minus one at the end. That is a, a concentration um, formula code. It's a formula code. So let's say if they reformulate the perfume, they should give you a different code at the end. Dior is very quick to change those. They're always like changing. Every new edition is like a new uh, formulation code. With Chanel, I haven't seen them change really. So I don't know how they manage to maintain those numbers unless those numbers don't mean something completely different. But that IL941 is should be the formula code for number 22 Eau de Parfum. Now let me show you the next picture. Okay, so now uh, this is the description. As you can see, it's the extrait. Now we're reading Chanel's description for the 15 milliliter this little baby here, extra or pure perfume or parfum. It says it's a skin scent, a floral powdery aldehyde fragrance with a strong personality. Ah, oh, fragrance filled. Thank you so much for the tip. Let me Fragrance-filled donated twenty-two dollars. 
a $22 tribute to you and Chanel number 22 on this special day for a special episode. You are sparkling and always at your best when you are educating us about the world of Chanel. I wonder if Rose... Oh, let me read that. Wait, we're missing a part of the... Bubbles fainted. <laughs> because Bubbles understood like, whoa! 22 tip for Chanel 22. And also, not for nothing, I chose... The first, like the, the solstice, you know, the shortest day of the year and the longest night of the year because number 22 is under the shadow. It's in the night. It's in the shadow of number five. Everything was calculated, you guys. Plus, from the 21st, we jump into the 22nd of December. Why the 22nd of December? Because of Chanel 22, baby. It's the last 22 of the year. I have calculated everything in this video <laughs> you don't you don't want to know it's insane so let me read let me read phil's um text so a 22 dollar tribute to you and channel number 22 on this special day for a special episode you are sparkling and always at your best when you are educating us about the world of chanel i wonder if rose wore number 22 back in saint olaf number 22 to toilet for me tonight oh man let me pop your cherry let me pop your cherry first. Here's a red one for you. Whoa, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> it popped. <laughs> it was like, pew. it was a St. Olaf cherry. Okay. So I do believe that Rose Nyland was very much influenced by Dorothy and Blanche. And there's a particular episode in the Golden Girls where, um, Dorothy is sick and she needs to go on a date, but then she wants Blanche to go for her. Blanche doesn't want to for some reason because she thinks Dorothy's men are all lame. And she says, I will give you my Chanel number five if you do this for me. And then Blanche asks, cologne or perfume? And Dorothy says, cologne. And then Blanche says, no, <laughs> only the perfume. So this is how I know that they wear Chanel number five in the show. And I do believe that Rose would copy them. So she would also wear Chanel number no. five or Charlie because she was married to Charlie. So she might also be wearing the perfume Charlie because knowing Rose, she probably thought Charlie made the perfume Charlie. But we digress. And a lot of love to you, Betty White, wherever you are right now. So uh, anyway, a floral powdery aldehyde fragrance with a strong personality uh, incessantly sensual and seductive, sweet and refined, tuberose plays the major note, a true mark of femininity, according to Mademoiselle Chanel. So they're literally quoting Coco Chanel as having said, a true mark of femininity. Okay, whatever, girl. That's a little bit, that's a, that's a poor length to be a full quote. You know what I mean? It's like they're taking her quote out of context because Anyway, yeah, it is powdery, it is floral, it is very aldehydic, true. It does have a strong personality, incessantly sensual and seductive. I, I don't know if this, is, if this one is constantly seductive. I wouldn't call this perfume seductive, personally. Sweet and refined. It doesn't go too sweet. It is refined. Tuberose plays the major note, yes. Yes, and also what I want to say... Unlike Chanel Number no. 5, which is more of a timeless Art Deco fragrance, Number no. 22 is very, very dated. Not in a negative way, though. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying, oh, this is an old perfume. It's, it's very clear that this perfume smells of the 20s. And I've said this in my separate review of Chanel Number no. 22, but it is such a 20s fragrance. Oh my gosh, it is quintessentially. When I smell 1922, I'm living in this weird brother grim, brother's grim fairy tale moment. That's why we're reviewing it from a fairy tale point of view. Uh, in the 20s, however. Anyway, so let me let me read the next one, uh, which I think is either let's see what's the next one. Okay, so this is the ingredients for the extrait. 
also water listed in the extrait. So it's not very different from the eau, from the eau de parfum. Uh, it does have some colors in there as well, with the yellow, the red. You see, they've they've used the blue. They've colored a lot. They've they've used a lot of chemicals in this one in the extrait, and the you see the formula code is different for this one. It's IL fifty two minus one, right at the end. And now the next one should be the photo for the description of the eau de parfum. There it is. Now, <clears throat> what does Chanel have to say about the eau de parfum? Now, mind you, they sell the eau de parfum more than they sell the extrait. The extrait doesn't sell as much as the parfum. Because people think they get such a little amount for so much money. But the magic is in using it the right way. You don't need to use a lot of the pure perfume, you know. It's an intimate gesture just for you. Description number 22, a variation of number five. Oh, already, you see, there you go, Chanel, with the shadow. Number 22, a variation of number five. Uh, you know what I mean? They're already putting it on a lower pedestal. The legendary Chanel fragrance was composed in 1922. Its delicately worked accord is smooth tender and powdery, like an absolute of femininity. Composition. With its accord of tuberose, rose, and orange blossom, number 22 is a sensual, seductive fragrance, a caressing trail, like an absolute of femininity. Inspiration. In 1921, Ernest Beau composed the legendary number five for Coco Chanel. Here we go again. The very next year, he presented a variation with a delicately worked accord, that leaves a caressing trail. Number 22, like 1922, the year of its creation, resonates like an absolute of femininity. Um, so I've also heard another story about Chanel 22, that actually Chanel 22 was presented to her uh, together with number five. It was in that batch of perfumes that she sniffed. So technically... It might have even had a different number, but they decided to call it number 22 because it was released in 1922. You know, there's a bit of myth going on there and the Chanel brand is trying to twist it in their favor. But how are they twisting it in their favor? In this short span of space, they managed to repeat twice that number 22 is not as good as number five. That's literally what they said here, twice so annoying you know what i mean that's like no i would fire the person who wrote this but this is showing us who the evil character is in this fairy tale somebody's putting down nobody puts baby in the corner remember dirty dancing nobody puts baby in the corner and nobody should especially not chanel the brand should put 22 in the corner. And yet they do. They keep doing it. They keep doing it. One thing they did do right in the past years, well, two things. And um, I think that's it for the description uh, portion of the, the video. I can show you the heritage now. The one good thing they did is this beautiful collage that they made a couple of years ago. I think it's a beauty. It's also available as a postcard, by the way. Um, they are showing us the 20s, ver well, not really 20s, this is more 60s, actually, well, 50s, 60s version of Chanel number 22 ad, which we've also seen in this live stream. Thumb up the live stream or thumb up the video if you haven't already and you are enjoying it. It helps the algorithm a lot. And then we have a current version of the number 22 Eau de Parfum bottle with kind of an origami type of cutout visual in the background. And then you have all the florals in the front. And then that little red line just one line of red in this black and white image and the yellow bottle, but we have the black frame, white frame, black frame again, and one side of the black frame is red. So this is the heritage. I call it the heritage moment because this is kind of as far as Chanel pushed it 
when it comes to advertisement. Um, however, there is more. And a couple of years ago, prior to this, and I'm going to leave this one up for just for a second so you can still see it. I don't know if the chats are running or not. Nothing is moving. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm going to leave this one up. So this one came out a couple of years ago. Again, it was not printed in like magazines. This was just printed on one of those postcards that they would give you in the boutique. But also it was visible and still visible today on the Chanel website from time to time. They pop this image up or down. Now, there's more uh, than, than just that. Chanel released a set of postcards. Check these out. A couple of years ago, and they sent me a set as a promotional thing, like to promote their perfume. I didn't get any perfumes for free. I just got the postcard. They're not really postcards because they have uh, text in the back, so you can't really put a stamp on them and send them away. But I just wanted to show you this is how... A couple of years ago, they advertised Chanel number 22. Like a close-up photo of it, <laughs> like this. And, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it could have been done better, no? Like, that's all you get to see. It's like hiding. And the text behind it says, a very uh, intimate perfume. Okay. And again, they begin. So first they, they describe it as abstract. I love that word, that they describe it as abstract, powdery, floral. And they say in the description text, just like the year before. And here we go again. <laughs> just like the year before, uh, number five was launched. Also, number 22 is challenging new paths hmm. or paving the way. The elegant number 22 represents the year that the fragrance was launched in 1922. And it also represents the 22nd perfume that Ernest Beau presented to Mademoiselle Chanel. It's a perfume with a very strong personality and an endless, attractive emotion. In the middle point of this fragrance is the ultimate, the ultimate feminine, daring tuberose. Now, that's what Chanel uh, wrote to describe number 22 a couple of years ago. The text that we read together that I blended onto the screen is the text that they're using now as of today, 2022. They've simplified their text. They've reduced the description of it. They're kind of, you know, it's it's everything is minimizing, minimizing, minimizing. As we're going through an, a recession, everything becomes smaller. Everything becomes more... Number 22 needs a bombastic, opulent depiction, I believe. Not something so minimal. You know what I mean? So, but this is the Heritage Shot. Now, thank you, Heritage Shot. Uh, let's get to the fairy tale. Now, we figured out on this journey who the bad guy is. And it's really hard to fight the bad guy, even if you're a perfumer, because the bad guy is your boss, the company. But I do believe that our knights in shining armor wanted to redeem number 22 in their own way, just like they rendered a new version, a new flanker of Chanel number no. five with Au Premier, Jacques Polge, or Lo, Olivier Polge. They wanted to deliver a modernized version of 22. But how? And they did. But how? Interesting that somebody in the chat said before, oh, um, 22 was Coco's perfume. 
the Osmotech in Paris says, allegedly, right? That 22 was Coco's perfume before number five. That number 22 maybe in many cases represents Coco more than Chanel number five. Hard to believe, right? Because we've, we've been told all this time that number five is the bomb diggity, is Coco Chanel's perfume. Hold on, I'm getting a little bit oily. Let me just refresh. So how is it possible? How is it possible? That everything falls together so perfectly. And I'm telling you this, why? Uh, I'm saying this because... Oh my gosh, there's a lot of powder. Ooh, cha, too much powder. I'm saying this. Okay, too much powder. <laughs> wow, we are powdered for the gods now. Whew. Um, okay, too much powder, and I don't know what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So that's kind of more like Chanel 22 rather than number five. Well, debatable, but no flanker of 22 was ever released. In fact, the only thing that we received new for 22 was the Eau de Parfum. Because the inception of number 22 did not have any Parfum. The inception was Parfum. Eau de Cologne, Eau de Toilette. That's it. The Eau de Parfum of number 22 was first launched ever in history in 2016. Back in 2016. Uh, when uh, Olivier Polge took over. Olivier Polge took over a little bit earlier than that. But Chanel decided they, you know, they want to compete with the prices of Dior, Louis Vuitton fragrances so up until that moment chanel was selling eau de toilette les exclusives and extraits but they didn't want to have that price range of the eau de toilettes they wanted to up their prices and their concentrations to louis vuitton's concentration because louis vuitton was only selling eau de parfums and dior collection Privé was also only selling eau de parfums so couple of extraits as well but they wanted to up their game as well and be like okay you know what we're going to discontinue your toilettes and we're going to reintroduce all of them as eau de parfums making them cost a lot more and change the concentration that's what olivier polge was responsible of he did the reformulations now i do believe that jacques polge or maybe even ernest Beau already had a different concentration somewhere hidden in a drawer in the archives in the perfume archives of chanel or wherever so maybe Olivier Polge did not conceive the Eau de Parfum of Chanel number no. 22. But the fact is, the first time we had an official launch of Chanel number no. 22 Eau de Parfum was under Olivier Polge in 2016. But that's not what I'm talking about in terms of flankers of Chanel number no. 22. No. Also, because what did Jacques Polge do? Jacques Polge did not release a flanker of Chanel number no. 22. Jacques Polge released the, the re-released the mythical four. He tweaked them. He reformulated them. Quid de Roussi, Gardenia, Bois de Zille, uh, and um, number 22 in the 80s. But those fragrances already existed in the 20s. No. He re-envisioned something new. Jacques re-envisioned something new as well as Olivier. What is that new? These knights in shining armor trying to echo Number 22. Maybe they're not even knights in shining armor. Maybe they're also evil, Knievel, in this story. Why am I saying this? Because maybe they're also just trying to copy Ernest Beau and they were trying to create something as majestic as number 22. With 22 in mind, they delivered something. Another cliffhanger. Why am I saying... <laughs> Because first I want to go through with you the packaging. Look, right when they discontinued their, uh, their eau de toilettes, I stocked up. So I have here uh, number 22 eau de toilette 200 milliliter bottle. Here you have the size. So I have one uh, sealed bottle in my archives. 
of number 22, 200 ml. And I also got the Eau de Toilette, 75 milliliter bottle in my archives. So these are in the Fashion Bunker archives as, you know, Yeah, the last batch has ever produced, I believe. This was a 0301 and 0501. <coughs> Pardon me. So this one is kind of... Um, slightly younger batch than this one, just a couple of weeks or months. And then, even though number 22 was released in the 80s and then you know by re-released in the 80s by uh, Jacques Paul in the in that Les Exclusives range of four 20s fragrances re-released and then we have this version and even though in America it was available you know still with the bath range outside of the boutiques still when all of these perfumes were taken off the market uh, late 2000s. To then reintroduce them in this format. Still, they went through transformations. And let me tell you, before this 200 milliliter format was introduced back in 2006 slash 2007, before that, we had this, right? 50 ml, 100 ml, rechargeable, white container. They had number five in the black container, plastic container with gold. And number 19 in the silver gray container uh, with gold. And then we have number 22 in the white container, plastic with gold. But when this one was discontinued, they introduced this format. Now, I don't have the number 22 100 milliliter interim bottle, but I have Bois des Îles. So Chanel introduced this bottle after this bottle was discontinued. They reintroduced the four Gardenia, Bois des Îles, Cuir de Russie, number 22, um, in this bottle here. 100 milliliter bottle, just like the, like we have now Cristal, or like we have. Um, pour Monsieur, they also did the Les Exclusives in these bottles. So they did Bois des Îles, Gardenia, Cuit de Russie, number 22. So number 22 had this bottle as well. Now, interesting, I have the feeling somebody in the marketing team at Chanel didn't know what they were doing because these were available in these bottles for many years, many years. Then Chanel updated their Chanel number no. five bottle. And for some reason, when they updated their number no. five bottle, they decided to also update their Les Exclusives bottles, but they only did it for like two years. And then they took all the Les Exclusives off the market because they were gearing up to launch this collection in these bottles but right before they discontinued the old bottles there was another interim interim bottle for the les exclusives and i also don't have a 22 bottle here but i have a cuir de Russi. they they released the les exclusives for a very 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 limited amount of time and this is why i see the marketing team spent a lot of money for nothing because they should have just kept the other bottles until they discontinued them completely. But anyway, this design bottle with a spray, you just push it in here so you can't take anything off. In fact, uh, number 19, very bizarre, that Chanel number 19 or the toilette is still available in this bottle. Okay, so the Chanel number 19 or the toilette is still produced in this bottle, but this bottle has been discontinued otherwise. No other Chanel perfume is still made in this bottle except number 19 Eau de Toilette. Why? I do not know. But however, in that short period of time, in the late 2000s, 
or mid 2000s okay in the mid 2000s they switched these bottles they switched these bottles for these 100 mil 100 mil okay they're both 100 mil even though this one is much sleeker and smaller even though it's the same amount of product hold on it's not focusing sorry uh isn't that fascinating and a year or two only and then they took these off the market completely completely took it off the market and then for about a year or half a year like you couldn't get les exclusives anywhere it was super hard to get them because they took them all away to then relaunch them again the year after or two years after in this format and in the beginning of this format there was only 200 mil you could only buy them in 200 mil, which drove me crazy because I was traveling a lot. And you couldn't fly with 200 mil. You couldn't take this on board with you. Before I had the 100 mil bottles, now I didn't. So Chanel, for several years, three or four years, they would only make the 200 mil bottles. And then because a lot of clients kept saying, hey, make a smaller bottle, make a smaller bottle. Then a couple of years after 2007, they introduced the 75 mil bottles as well due to popular demand. However, sneaky, sneaky Chanel, they didn't introduce 100 mil, they introduced 75 mil to be able to charge more. So they're charging them like 100 mil, but they're giving you 75 mil, hence, you know, fine, whatever. It is what it is. Now, in that whole time, the 15 milliliter number 22 extrait was available in that 15 ml extrait bottle. Ah, this is an endless story. Are you having fun? Thumb up the live stream, you guys. I know it's like there's a lot to cover here. There's a lot of ground to cover when we're talking about number 22. Yes, Gloria, they destroy the discontinued bottles. I know it's a travesty. Okay, <clears throat> next. What else did Chanel do to advertise number 22? throughout the years since they launched the Les Exclusives range encompassing the four original exclusives, Gardenia, Bois des Îles, number 22, Cuit de Russie. And then they added Sycamore, 31 Roucambon, Beige, Jersey, and all those perfumes, Some, uh, Eau de Cologne that were released in 2006-7. Um, and then they keep adding new ones on top of that. Now, Where is it? Ah, here. What I'm about to show you now from my archives, very special. When the Les Exclusives were uh, first released in their new... Um, form in their 200 milliliter form a special coffret was made this thing and it keeps on focusing it's so annoying okay this little set was made as a gift for special clients uh when they were first released uh you know les exclusives were not that popular they were not. So I got this off. I was not a, a client that was spending so much money to warrant a freebie like this. I got this off a secondhand website, dirt cheap uh, for what it is. I think I paid $50 for it or $40 back then. Now, if you find it, it's like $400. But nobody really cared, right? Somebody was selling this. The first set of Eau de Toilette, four milliliter Les Exclusive Fragrances. You're, what you're about to see here now is the first set ever made. Here they are. All right. Now, when the Les Exclusives sets were released, like back in 2007, when, uh, or well, 2006, 2007, these are the ones that came out. We have many more today. 
but these are the ones that were released in the first edition, okay? So I don't know if I can zoom this in. Maybe I'm already zoomed into the map. Hold on, you guys, working on it. Working on it. And um, just want to show you as close as possible these little bottlets. Okay. So. Here you can see we got number 22 is the first one, right? Gardenia, Bois des Îles, Cuit de Russie, Eau de Cologne, 31 Rue Cambon, number 18, Coromandel, Bel Respiro, 28 La Pausa, and Sycamore. Is the last one Sycamore? Yeah. So this is the entire set. These were the first one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The original eleven that were launched in 2006 slash 2007. It was just eleven of them. Well, it was just four of them, right? In the beginning, it was 22, Gardenia, Bodezil, Quidderussi. Then they added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new ones. And then since then, they kept adding new ones. And now, in 2016, they discontinued all the other toilets and they introduced only eau de parfum so all of these that you see here are eau de toilette concentrations from the first launch in fact look how cute even the at the top they have a little sponge inside to protect them so when you put this on top it preserves them so if you flip it it doesn't let the bottles fall and here at the bottom you see the concentrations and the names of the fragrances the names that are copywritten <laughs> Down here you have the copyright, like Sycamore is a trademark, number 22 is a registered trademark, uh, and it's um, 11 times 4 milliliter little bottles. Now, Chanel number 22 is in this set. Okay, it's right here. There it is. Um, to note, the bottles back then were straight, square. So what does that mean? That the sides here were straight. They weren't, they weren't rounded off. Okay, remember that. We're going to get to that later. All right. So this was the first set released of the 2006-7 Les Exclusives. Free as a freebie set, like get to know me set. So Chanel, they were very proud of what they did, right? They they invested you know, money in this. I mean, they to produce this little set costs a lot of money. However, those bottles were cut straight. Uh, those bottles already existed. Chanel used to do their Chanel Number no. Five perfume. Uh, samples as well as other fragrance splash samples in four milliliter they would do them in these bottles so these bottles didn't have to be manufactured extra for the les exclusives they were already available they just had to do the miniature stickers but what chanel also did um, is they released uh, for chanel number 22 a single individual box as well so I'm gonna to have to zoom this in too so you probably you still know this from today because they are still available today in eau de parfum concentration however but these are four milliliter samples splash bottles that they give you uh, if they want to and if they have them this is then eau de toilette as you can see And you slide it open like this. And inside is the bottle. There it is, the little munchkin. So cute. 
So this is a little number 22 eau de toilette splash bottle. And it is adorable. And But also, you can see again, it is very cut straight on the sides here, okay? It's not rounded off like it's for sale counterpart. You see how it's curved? It's it's curved outwards, curved outwards. It's not a straight line. But Chanel had these bottles, right? So they, you know, manufactured them like this. Then in 2016, the change happened. Uh, these fragrances uh, shifted concentration from eau de toilette to eau de parfum. The eau de toilette were discontinued. And... <clears throat> the eau de parfums were introduced. Here you have the four milliliter eau de parfum. I have to zoom this in as well. This is the four ml eau de parfum. In fact, when we flip it, there you have the concentration is eau de parfum. Now, in the first couple of years, when the eau de parfums were introduced, if you open this up, you see that the eau de parfum inside is also straight cut, the glass here. It's not rounded. It's like a little, you know, uh, like a little rectangle. However, and this is really fascinating. Chanel keeps evolving. And I loved when this happened. The attention to detail. At a certain point, maybe they ran out of these glasses or they just saw, I don't know how, they, maybe they got a budget for it. But whoever in the marketing team decided to step up their game, finally, with all the price increases, it's the least you could do, right? But what they did was, at a certain point in time, they updated their, their sample bottle. So here, let me zoom this one in as well. So here is uh, batch code 4003, which was, I think, the first batch code that I got that had the new bottles. So this is an Eau de Parfum as well. Maybe even the, the later three series had this, but anyway, this batch code is 4003. And when we open it, Eau de Parfum, when we open it, y'all, and we take the little bottle out, well, first of all, now you don't see already here, but when I take it out, you're going to notice. I'm going to compare the two. The other Eau de Parfum and this one, And when we turn them like this, oh my God, there's so little. Are you going to see this, you guys? Look at it. Look at this. So this one is the updated version. They rounded the sides of the bottle. So this number 22 bottle sample is rounded off on all sides. And the older version is just square. So this little tiny sample bottle has been updated to match the rounded corners or the rounded sides of the of its big for sale counterpart. That's attention to detail. That's attention to detail in my book. You know what I mean? Let me just put this back into its container. Go back to sleep, my little bottle. Oh, it's like my little pony, you know? So wait, this was in this package. And this one is, yeah, and this one. It's an interesting detail that, I mean, hey, if you've made it thus far in this video, these are the type of geeky details you're into, just like I am. But it doesn't end there because Chanel also had a simpler version of their samples of Chanel number 22. 
The first one came in a form of a sealed uh, foldable box. Now this one is still originally closed. So let me zoom this one in as well. Now, um, this one went through several transformations. When they were first released, there was a Les Exclusives de Chanel print in the front. Now they've changed that to, now they actually, I don't have a 22 version of it, can you believe? But now they write the name of the perfume in the front. So here, for example, is a Sycamore, Sycamore Eau de Parfum example. It says Sycamore here, right? But back when they released the Eau de Toilettes, it would just say Les Exclusives de Chanel. And then in the back, it would tell you which perfume you got. Number 22, Eau de Toilette. Interesting to note that back in the day, there's at the bottom here, bottom right or left corner, you can see it says two milliliter. They used to give you two milliliter spray bottles. Now they only give you 1.5 ml. So they were more generous back then. They even cut the samples smaller to save even more money. But the spray samples used to be 2 ml and they would be sealed here in the front. So I'm not going to open this because this one is archived. These are no longer in production. So you can see they were kind of given to you like this with this little seal and you have to break through it. So this was the first edition. Then it evolved. Again, I am missing the number 22 evolution, but I have here an example. When in 2016, they discontinued the Eau de Toilettes and introduced the Eau de Parfums, the first Eau de Parfum released was Boy de Chanel. Boy was launched in 2016, Olivier Polge perfumer. Uh, so this sample is from the first launch of Boy, launched in Eau de Parfum. And check this out, their first Eau de Parfum launches, let me zoom this in, in 2016, their first Eau de Parfum concentrations of their spray samples in 2016 were indeed 2 milliliter. Right down here, look, right down there, it says 2 ml. I don't have a sample of number 22 of this one, but I have boy just for sake of showing you the evolution. Now it evolved further. Well, I, I skipped a passage. Sorry, you guys. So this one, right? This was the first one uh, with the seal. Okay. Two milliliter eau de toilette with the seal. Then they evolved from this to two milliliter, still no name on the front, but we have the, let me zoom this in. Here we have number 22 Eau de Toilette in the back, also two milliliter, but we don't have a seal. So this is the evolution of it. So you have here, you see this one just opens up. There's no seal here in the front. When you open it, you have your spray bottle here and you have a list of all the other Les Exclusives available being number 22, Gardenia, Bois de Zille, Cuide Rossi, Eau de Cologne, 31 Rue Cambon, number 18, Coromandel, Bel Respiro, 28 La Pausa, Sycamore, Beige, Jersey, 1932. So in fact, you can see that this is an evolution because we have Beige, Jersey, and 1932 added to the original 11. The original 11 ended with Sycamore. After that, they introduced beige a year later, then a year later, two years later, Jersey, and then 1932. All in Eau de Toilette. After this, reformulation, concentration change, we got the Eau de Parfums, but still two milliliter. That was the example that I had here of Boy. Still no name in the front, okay? But in the back, you see Eau de Parfum. Let me zoom this in. Two milliliter, right down there. And then they went really stingy on us. First, they upped the prices because they, they jumped from the toilette to the parfum. And then 
they lowered the, the amount. So here is an example like 2017, so more or less right about a year after they introduced the eau de parfums. Still, we don't have a name in the front, only in the back. But look, look, look what happens now. Here's a number 22 eau de parfum sample. Right down here, right down here, 1.5 ml. Now they're giving us 0 0.5 ml less. And when we open this inside, we have two new additions, Misia and Boy, the Chanel. So we have the original 11 up to Sycamore. Then we got Beige, Jersey, 1932. And then Olivier Polge arrives and does Misia and Boy. Since then, Olivier Polge has done Misia, Boy, 1957, and Le Lion de Chanel. After that, the next evolution of the samples is with the name in the front. I, I don't have a number 22 with the name in the front yet, so I'm still waiting to get that. But let me zoom this in. So this is the current version as of December 2022, the current version of their spray samples. You get the name of the perfume in front and the back. You get the, where do you get the size? I can't see. Oh yeah, here, right down here, 1.5 ml. And the concentration is in the front, bottom. Right down there, it says Eau de Parfum. And you don't have a list of all the perfumes anymore inside because it's too many of them. Chanel doesn't, I think, they don't think it's elegant anymore to write all the other names on the side, so they just leave it at that. Woo, I saw myself double. So that was a, a short evolution of the samples of Chanel number 22 and how it evolved from the two milliliter to 1.5 ml and the splash bottles, which are four ml, the size of the bottle, the shape of the bottle. All right. So we touched base on that as well. <laughs> Thumb up the video if you're liking it, by the way, you guys, because this is a lot of work, let me tell you. Um, now let's get to the present time. Our knights in shining armor. Hmm. You know, wafts of number 22 are coming at me from all the sides. I'm, I'm sprayed from head to toe with it, but I believe that Jacques Polge um, loved number 22 in his own special way. And guess which perfume I think he envisioned as a modern day number 22. Are you ready, Ferret? Here goes. Now, Jacques Polge retired in 2015, 16, but in the 90s, listen, in the 80s, he revamped the Les Exclusives range. Number 22, Gardenia, Bois des Îles, de Russie. In the 90s, he revamped number 19 by creating his version of it, the Eau de Parfum. In the 90s, he also released his Eau de Parfum version of Cristal. But there's a brand new perfume launched in the 90s, which to me is literally the 90s version of Chanel number no. 22. Here it is, you guys. This and it is in shiny armor. Look at that shining armor. The knight in shining armor delivered. Allure. Eau de toilette. Eau de toilette. Not the eau de parfum. Okay? Eau de toilette and extrait of Allure is the 90s version of Chanel number no. 22.
I believe the number 22 inspired him so much that he wanted to create his own version of it. Now, nobody comes close to Ernest Beau's original creation. Nobody. But Allure, if you think about of Chanel number 22, you think about the 20s. It just, it smells of the 20s. And I've talked about it extensively in my other reviews of Chanel number 22. And I think what Jacques was, it's just my speculation, what he was so fascinated by is, is the time warp that that perfume has, the power of transporting you to a time. And he created his own time machine. This is the 90s version of Chanel number 22. And whenever I smell it, I am back in the 90s, baby. I am in the 90s. It is, this is Chanel's 90s version of 22. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. The knight in shining armor tried. They probably didn't let him call it number 22 au premier or number 22 low or number 22 fresh or new take. But this to me is such a modern take of number 22. Now, we have another knight in shining armor, Olivier Poge, the sun. In my fairy tale, the story goes like this. Just like Chanel number 22 is always in the shadow of its bigger sister, number five. Well, so are all the perfumers who will ever work for Chanel. No matter how good they are, all of these perfumers are always going to live in the shadow of Ernest Beau. Ernest Beau is the queen of hearts that reigns supreme on this kingdom. Everybody else is just Alice in Wonderland, really. No matter how good of a creator and perfumer you are, you will never live up to Chanel number no. five. I do believe that in my fairy tale, Olivier Polge, Jacques Polge, but also Sheldrake, why not? Christopher Sheldrake as well, but also Henri Robert. And it'll be a little bit detached, but all of them lived in the shadow of, er of uh, Ernest Beau. They all have to live up to what he did, and he did everything. You know. So I feel like they all have this challenge once they take on the role as artistic directors, perfume directors of Chanel, is to try to create their own legacy and reinvent those historic perfumes that changed, literally changed the world. And they also feel specially connected to number 22 because just like 22 is living in the shadow of number five, they are all living in the shadow of Ernest Beau. Now, the marketing team is the evil person here because they don't allow you to choose a name that you want as a perfumer. They choose the name. They choose the packaging. So Allure was created. Interesting that when Allure was created, it was talked about as the Allure of Mademoiselle Chanel. It's her Allure and the Allure of every person wearing this fragrance, right? Interesting how in the chats, we were also talking about the fact that Chanel herself wore 22 before she wore number five. Is this the allure of Chanel? Is this referencing her original allure, which is according to, allegedly, according to Rachel, what Rachel said about the Osmotech in Paris, that number 22 was the allure of Chanel before number five was? Well, then maybe this is a hint. The name is hinting at 22, the original allure of Chanel. The modern version of 22 is Allure. Well, modern, 90s. But now comes the son, taking over the hard work that the father left behind. The father created some mythological perfumes as well. Coco is a great perfume, even though it's not a bestseller anymore. Allure is amazing. Chance is also amazing. Coco Mademoiselle is amazing. But none of them are number five. Now comes the son. Olivier Polge arriving in 2015, 2016, creating immediately his version of number five, Lo, just like his father did Au Premier. L'O Premier did not work for me. Sorry. 
Lou is nice, but it's not Chanel number no. five, the pure perfume. It just isn't. And it's also not the other toilet. So Olivier Polge now has to live in the shadow of his father and in the shadow of Ernest Beau. So what does Olivier Polge do? He's probably also connected to the story of number 22, being that number 22 is in the shadow of number five. He also probably has limitations because probably, everything's alleged here, the marketing team is probably telling him, you're not going to be able to release some other flanker of number 22 because like, it's not the best seller for us. It's not making us good money. He probably, and this is just in my own fairy tale story, just like Coco Chanel reinvents the myth of her own past the same way I reinvent the myth and the fairy tales of these perfumes that move me so much. And in my fairy tale, Olivier Polge has to battle these demons, <laughs> these Chanel marketing demons, and has to try to deliver justice to number 22. Interesting how his father in my fairy tale created the allure of Chanel. And Rachel said the allure of Chanel was 22. Well, Olivier Polge thought to himself, our knight in shining armor, how can I take this a step further? We don't need to hide the fact that it, this is about Coco herself. We don't need to hide the fact that this is Oh, what does the allure intend and mean? You know, what? I'm going to call it like I see it. And he had to fight. There were issues. Things didn't go his way. A perfume was released. It wasn't the best. It was then re-released, reformulated, different concentration, different flanker name. Eh, wasn't the best. And finally, in 2022, you think it's a coincidence? I don't think so. Finally, in 2022, exactly 100 years after number 22 was released, Olivier Polge is allowed to release his true intentions. The number 22 of today. No beating around the bush and calling it allure, this allure of Chanel. No. He releases the extrait of Gabriel. The true allure of Gabriel is only in the extrait slash parfum concentration. The eau de, eau de parfum of Gabriel is not good. Essence, also not. This thing, magic. Magic. I travel through time when I smell this. And yes, it's been since 1922 that we haven't had a tuberose in Chanel perfumes. Now it's back. The main accord of 22 is tuberose. The main accord of Gabrielle is tuberose. We got finally the extrait of Gabriel in 2022, 100 years after 22 was released, we did not get a celebration of 22's 100th birthday, but we got a silent, secret launch, a secret release, unannounced, whispered, only whispered, of the extrait of Gabriel. It was released without any announcements. It was secret. It was ushered in from the stage door onto the stage to stand right next to Allure, which stands right next to number 22. This is the story. This is the fairy tale. And it does have a happy ending because we found a way to have a special release this year, even though it wasn't called a 22 100th birthday release of a special item, special fragrance. It was done in secret. It was done 
almost like battling the evil forces, you know, getting a win without officially saying what it is. But the tuberosin, the extrait of Gabriel, is a modern, and not just that, the vanilla, the ilang ilang, most of the ingredients in 22 are also in Gabriel. Almost all of them. Extrait. Gabriel Extrait. I will never stress enough to repeat myself. The pure perfume of Gabriel Extrait or Parfum. Um, full circle, baby. Full circle. Everything comes full circle. And this is why I was so obsessed with this one when it was released and I couldn't figure out what it was. And now I know. Full circle. 100 years after 22 is released, we get Gabriel. And my magic, magic snow globe. Is this fairy tale over? Is there a happy ending? Or is there another twist in this plot? Hmm. I see the future. And I have a sneaky suspicion. We have to fight to preserve something else before it disappears forever. Hmm. Just like magic, this pops up. This little gold on 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 gold. <laughs> this little magic concoction is here. And what's inside here is very fragile. What's inside here is not going to... I think be in production much longer. But I managed to hunt one down. And just like number 22, this one also needs preserving. Hiding in the dark shadows, in the black dark shadows of all of its ancestors. But it is in its own right a masterpiece. And I'm telling you, it's getting harder and harder to get this. So get it while you can, you guys, because I don't know how long they're going to still keep producing this one. There you go. This is what I got myself for the holiday season. I hunted down the last bottle in my boutique of Allure Chanel Parfum. A little extrait of Allure, which is so rare. You know, they used to do a spray version of this. They used to do different sizes of this. It's all gone. It's all gone. There's only the 15 ml left. And um, this beautiful little peachy fragrance will get a proper review as well but this in its own right is a fairy tale for another time but it's another little cliffhanger moment and allure with eau de toilette and parfum those are my babies these are the ones i love the most uh, eau de toilette did i sort of eau de toilette and extrait are, are my babies i love the hairspray as well the hair mist but these are amazing so That is a story for another time, as they say. Hmm. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Where is my crystal ball? <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this uh, celebration. Do I see a drink in my near future to celebrate this birthday? Yes, I think I do. 
Shall we have a little drink? Because the fairy tale is over, at least this episode. You know, the birthday celebration continues. We probably will not be here another hundred years from now. Who knows? Maybe medicine is going to evolve into something magical and it's going to be amazing. But maybe we all get to live a thousand years. We never know. But chances are this is the hundred year celebration for number 22 that we get in our lifetime. Oh, Damien, thank you so much for the uh, Damien Tran tip. donated six dollars. Heart. I got a little golden one for you. Hold on. Let me pop your cherry. Who knows who's going to be here a hundred years from now? Probably YouTube won't be here either. Woo! Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Damien, you, you were ready to be popped, honey. This was insane. Thank you so much. We popped your cherry. So this was, um, this was our moment. This was our moment to celebrate this gorgeous perfume, to enjoy it, to go through its history, to share these little nuggets of information, all the different variations of it, the advertisement campaigns, the price range, the ingredients, the smell of it. You know, to me, this review, you're not, you're not going to hear me say, oh, longevity, projection. I don't care about that stuff. Seriously. Really, I don't. Um, it's a journey. Wearing this fragrance is a lifetime of a journey. It, it's it's um, figuring out about it, learning about its past, how complicated it was, all of the dramas going behind the scenes. I mean, you know, these, this fairy tale is the review of this perfume. It's struggle to survive. It's struggle to find ways to reinvent itself. Maybe Jacques Polge and Olivier Polge were not even consciously aware of the fact that they were releasing new versions of number 22 under different names. Maybe it was number 22 manipulating them all this time. Maybe, just maybe, number 22 was the villain of this fairy tale and managed to manipulate everybody and managed to wait in the shadows, lingering, whispering, slowly, with time, just waiting for the right time to wake up and be triumphant. Maybe not in our lifetime, but one time, one day, it will happen. And hey, I always prefer the villains to the good guys in my fairy tales, so why not? Now, this villain wants a drink. Let me tell you. Let me just go get a little drink moment. Um, this concludes the fairy tale with the plot twist in the end. I hope you've enjoyed it. I want to say uh, thank you everybody for watching, uh, for tuning in. I hope you will like this uh, festivity and celebration of Chanel number 22's 100th birthday. I hope that you're going to join me in other festive moments, you know, coming soon. <laughs> and Jacob, you can really teach classes. You keep it interesting, engaging, and we learn so much. Thank you. Oh, Gloria, that's so kind of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Glad you liked it. Glad you guys enjoyed. I tuned in the live stream since it started. Jacob, you did an amazing job telling us the history. Oh, thanks, Trin. Thank you so much, Jacob. Wonderful stories and celebrations. Thank you, guys. Also kind of you. Oh, one warning. Be careful with these uh, particular um, gift wrapping paper. Now, not the box itself, but the gift wrapping paper that this comes in. Uh, the red one that's gold inside and, and red on the outside because the red stains everything. I actually, like, it's literally that bad. Um, let me show you. This. So this part doesn't stain. This, like... I don't even want to have it close to white stuff. So basically, um, if you like rub anything against it, like white paper or clothes, or if you have a, a light colored bag, this is going to rub off. Particularly this tish, this Chanel Chanel Christmas uh, holiday season 2022 wrapping gift wrapping paper. It's a killer. 
be very, very, very careful, you guys. This, this thing, I'll archive it in a plastic bag because I even archived those awful camellias from a couple of years ago that glitter all over them. The glitter falls everywhere. They're sealed and I have them archived. This will be archived as well, but this is very, very dangerous. All right, just saying. <laughs> okay, so, all right, let me, doesn't matter. I'll just have it like that. Oh, you guys. Also, now is the time if you want to share any um, story with um, about Chanel number 22. Uh, now is the time to do so while we take a sippy. So cheers. Here's to another 100 years. Chanel number 22, you are our favorite villain after all. Cheers. Happy birthday. Mm. Oh, yes, queen. Dirty martini, baby. Oh, this one's filthy. Uh. <coughs> oh, you guys, this was strong. Gloria says, can I tell you the eleganza of your outfit? Oh, thank you, darling. <coughs> I dressed in gold for the occasion, you know. Oh, Nev says, wow, hundred, something special in DD, right? Salute. Thank you, guys. Anybody else have to say, hey, Aisha. How's it going, sweetie? Mm. Ah. So I think everybody's still kind of processing this. It doesn't matter. It's okay. You can share your stories about number 22 in the comment section down below. And you know what I would also like to hear from you? I would like to hear from you your version of the fairy tale of number 22. How do you think number 22 turns out to be in your version of this fairy tale? Is it the victim? Is it the hero? Or is it a villain? In my story, it's the villain. Hmm. <laughs> I want to send a round of applause and thanks to our mods, Debbie, Jesus. Also, let me add Aisha as a mod as well. <laughs> Aisha, I'm going to add you as a mod and essentially Jacob. Are you fine with that? I'll just add you. <laughs> Round of applause to the mods. Here, here, here. I can't do it because my hands are... I'm applauding on my knee. Oh, number 22 is the first lady. Mr. Phillips says, after the story time, it seems like number 22 is the Princess Margaret of the House of Chanel. Oh, the, uh, the, the drama. I'm not a fan of 22. I don't know why. I had a few samples of that one, says Louis. It takes time to get to know her. It takes time. Let me cue in the nice little music, little charming moment of music for us. Hey, number 22. Who's going to be your next victim? Which other perfumer are you going to enchant to create another iteration of yourself? Number 22 stands there and says, Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Don't you dare say number five. Or you shall end in the dungeon. And the mirror looks and says, My queen, you are the fairest of them all, but just be careful. You have to hire the right perfumer to continue the legacy. Hmm. This one is also beautiful. Postcard of Cuit de Russie frozen in ice. Ah, this was a nice little video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, short and snappy. Well, it wasn't that short, but you know, when are we going to celebrate another hundred years? So 
what are we going to do next? Well, next we're going to definitely review our allure for the toilette and extrait. Bearing in mind that they are the new 22. The 90s 22. And then we're also going to... Go on a hunt. Because... Um, number 22, the Parfum is also coming back to my collection again in a new bottle. This is my old, the empty one. Believe it or not, it was sold out in my boutique. So looking forward to a number 1920, to a number 22 unboxing as well. I hope they still have these cute little uh, gift packages by the time that number 22 arrives back. How cute is this? And these ribbons, oh my gosh, aren't they adorable? You guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to thumb it up if you have. I'm wishing you the best end of years. I hope you had fun during uh, number 22 story time and fairy tale. This one's also, I'm going to take an extra sip for Coco Chanel because if it wasn't for her vision, we wouldn't be sitting here right now being in awe of all this beauty. That is this perfume. Coco and Ernest Beau, you've both created the most fascinating villain in perfume history. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love, subscribe, and I'll see you all on another festive occasion very, very soon. Bye.